Thank you for being here. We are Legends of Avantris, and we will see you in the mists. You ever stop to think about what it means to be a good and decent person? Does it mean to walk the straight and narrow path entirely free of earthly pleasure and sin? Is that really what it takes to truly be good? Is walking such a path possible for the common man or woman? Is it even possible for even the godliest of folk? Despite what they might tell you, my wager is a resounding no, at least if we're all honest with ourselves. Then again, when has honesty really been a primary trait of anyone trying to tell other folk how to live? You have just entered the home of the Mirabelles and found yourself surrounded by blood, viscera, and gore. In the, in the corner of the kitchen space, you see the tiny form of Colette Mirabelle as she shakes and shivers, unable to produce words or sounds, as she stares at the pulverized body of her father as it lies in bits on the, on the stone floor of their kitchen. It's clear, it's clear to all of you who and what could have done this. The partial giant known as Hugo. You see the blade held in Francois's hand. It is covered with blood, but it did him no good. As you watch the scene, Colette shakes and shivers and whimpers, too hurt, too traumatized to even cry. I take my hat off immediately. And with that, we would like to thank you for the twist of fate. <laughs> thank you so much, thank you. <laughs> but I had to get that out. <clears throat> ah! Okay, twist. now back to really back horrible, back awful stuff. Yeah. And we, uh, we also saw, um, you also saw Flappy the uh, you, yes. You fly saw away. Flappy oh, Philip. Oh, Flappy Philip. Yeah. You don't know its name yet, but yeah. yes, uh, the last thing that you saw, you were mere moments from. You still feel the brush of wind on your skin as this overly large. Was that my phone? Sorry, I must have <laughs> the size of a pug. <laughs> <laughs> the overly size um, sized form of the pigeon that was perched for just a moment on the um, the partially. Um, the partially wrecked door to the house mm. as it, use, it um, pushes itself off of the frame with its human hands um, and flies up into the air. You get a quick glimpse of its human humanoid face as it smiles down at you. And as you look up into the sky, you see that the entire skyline, though darkened by the eternal, the eternal night that is in this land, you can see the shapes of hundreds of pigeons. I would um, uh, gently step towards Colette, uh, but I am unable to speak, and I am very clearly biting the inside of my mouth as I approach her and uh, try to get her from the remains. And I believe I already made you make the constitution save and that you were good on that. Last roll, that blown up pigeon head. 
Okay, I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me, please. Thank you for being or you go But yes, that. thank you for maintaining game state, Dracula. And thank you, Nigel Arcane, for the follow. I like that you used the... Because <laughs> I was going to say, it's definitely Nigel. Nigel. An exhausted Nigel. dragon, it's never an interruption to thank you for a twist. Yeah, thank no, you. Never oh, thank you. Saving throw. We love you guys. Oh, shit. You have to do it at triple disadvantage. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Is that four dice? Sixteen. Oh, okay. Not bad. It's, it's a little, it's a little harder after what happened with Dudley in the alley and the stress of this entire situation. You're beginning to crack a little, but seeing this girl here, you know that stealing yourself against your, um, your vampiric urges is what needs to be done in this moment. You are able to block out the sight of the blood, the scent of the the metallic scent that hangs in the air, as you make your way towards her and. You, I will say you're easily able to reach down and pick her up, and she shakes in your arms. She looks up at you, her eyes blank. You can see that they were swollen. At one point she was able to cry, but she's cried so much there are no tears left as she looks up to you and says, He... He killed him. It's, it's all right. Shh, quiet. We're going to step outside. Just come with us. It's all right. And she just shakes. <laughs> Fucking hell. What Daddy. the fuck? Daddy. She turns and she fuck. buries her head into your chest. She doesn't cry, but she just shakes. I'm gonna like start like throwing shit through the, like go rummaging through their cupboards to find like a tablecloth or something. Just like throw it over. I'll say I'm not even gonna make you roll uh, anything for it. It's easy enough. You've been in this kitchen multiple times. You've you've helped uh, set the table for dinner with Francois, and so you know where everything's kept. And you're able to find um, one of their um, cotton linens uh, with a delicate floral pattern, and you lay it over his body. And I'll just like keep muttering to myself and like cursing, like what the fuck, and sort of like in total disbelief. This is a hard question to. Ask answer, I think, maybe, but like, do I get a sense of that Colette is just like, past the veil, shattered from this experience, yes. or is she, is she ongoingly, emotionally, like, hurting from, you know what I mean? Like, there's a distinction. I would say she's, she's at a point now where she's so numb from what she's seen that the worst is yet to come. <clears throat> Okay. So she's in that moment where she's still shock. in the disbelief and the shock. The, the reason um, I'm asking But is she I... doesn't seem like she's able to form coherent sentences. Okay. And I would say it's easy enough at this point, and to spare our audience uh, the sight of sad child, you realize very quickly you're not going to be able to get answers out of her. Um, she has gotten to the point now where she's clinging to Marius. Her hands are white with the amount of strength that she's holding on to the bits and pieces of the cloth that she can find under his armor. And she is just staring into her reflection and she's Feeling not this, speaking. Does Lethica feel like it would be a mercy to use calm emotions? I would say yes. You imagine that it would. Okay. Lethica would walk up seeing that you are wrapping her in this cloth and you are holding her and uh, put her hand. And if on. you're going to explain what you're going to do, I imagine she would just choose to fail whatever save oh. there is. Um, there. And I'm covering her, her father's yes. dead body with the, the table. I'm not, I'm not going not here. Girl. Calm, child. Be, be at peace. It, you, you, you have been through a terror today, but it will, it will be all right. In darkness, we see your truth. And I cast calm emotions after placing my hand on her forehead to, to sort of try and, and give her some brief respite. She looks up at you and you see uh, tears welling up just on the rim of her eyes as her bottom lip begins to quiver. And as you cast the spell, the exertion as it overtakes her, the exertion of this day, this trauma of this day, you watch as her eyes flicker and she immediately falls to sleep. That was mighty right thinking, Miss Lethica. That poor little one. She has a hard path in front of her now. But for this moment, she will be okay. We should get her away from this place when she wakes. She should not be immediately reminded, if we can. Didn't we leave the other girl here too? Anya. We have to find Anya. Search the house. Yes. Now, roll a group investigation. 
<clears throat> a little fella. I'm looking for you. Oh. Nah. I'm I'm not gonna investigate. I'm gonna stand by the door. I think that's and, and hold the girl. Why? It's very wise. And make sure that we're safe. Because it's still like chaos outside, right? Everyone's still yes. each other. Yeah. Um. All around the city, you st you still hear the screams, and you, as you listen, you hear the throes of passion as well. Any manner of sin that can be committed seems to to be happening on the streets of Cyril at this moment. Man, these guys, these civilians, I'll tell you. <laughs> Um, I have a good time. Two, okay. Fifteen. Okay. Six. Okay. Nine. Oh my god. And a four? Yeah. Yeah. I leave you all alone for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> he says, holding a child, <laughs> very parentingly. Um, yikes. Okay. Yeah. With that, you search the house and you are unable to find much of anything. You are emotionally distraught and distracted. The, even though the rest of you don't have a trace of vampiric, uh, vampireness to you, vamp, vampiracy, whatever, yeah, vampirism. Um, vampirism. Thank you. You can we're not too vampy. even you can <laughs> smell the stench of blood on the air, and the sight of this man's head completely caved in from the large fist that you know to have been made by Hugo. It is, it lingers and it is hard. As you get back towards the, the kitchen area, you all feel as if you didn't find anything, but you don't feel like you truly searched the way you'd hoped to. That it was, there you were too distracted and that there's something that you could have missed easily. Before, <laughs> and, and feel free to just shut me down on this. Sit in the corner of the room, but okay, he's missed her. As soon as I kind of realize <clears throat> what's happened and like the shock has worn off on Jericho, I would look. The shock does not wear off. Uh, or the immediate <laughs> shock. I would, uh, as it I would blink and I would uh, turn to Virgil, uh, who's sitting at the, the headstock of my banjo, and I was like, Oh, Virgil, uh, you, you got a good look at that gross, weird, 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 gross. Pi I'm wasting time, pigeon. Uh, can, can you go fly after it, see where it's headed, where it's going, and then just, just do, do your best? I, I believe in you, even though you don't believe in me and say an awful, cross, nasty thing. Anyway, go get flying. And I would like to send Virgil uh, off to fly and, and, and try to chase down the pigeon. I know it's been a bit. Um, if. If Virgil can do that, uh, that I will. Is... I will say you could have done that before you went to, in, to go investigate. To, yeah, yeah. Um, and as you, <clears throat> as you congregate back in the the kitchen area, I say that you'll you'll move towards the actual kitchen and less away from the dining area where you'd found his body. Um, you could still see it, but it's a way for you to to stay separate from it for a little bit while you communicate, um, well within the confines of the house and the the riotous acts that are happening in the streets and. Virgil flies back in to you um, and he communicates with you quickly and I'm not going to use a voice for him, but he essentially says that uh, the entity, he was able to track it down on multiple occasions and where it came to rest was the uh, bell tower mm. of the cathedral. Oh. oh boy. Gosh, that, Virgil, you don't take this the wrong way since you're my dearest chum. <laughs> But that's a lot more useful information than I thought. W well done. Have a have a have a scrap of uh, of breakfast uh, implement. I might just find in the kitchen. No, stay away from Francois. No, no. Oh. I'll try to find a piece of something and feed it to him. There's ample food in the the pantry, etc. All right. Well, we didn't find her, but uh, maybe we can ask Colette if she knows what happened to her. I'll I'll relay that information. I don't think you're gonna get anything from the little girl. She's shaken up beyond belief. We don't have any evidence she's in danger. And we know for a fact that they probably took Zephyrine, so we should try to save her if she's not already fucking burned at the stake. Well, well, why would they, if they're taking Zephyrine, why would they take the other little one? With any luck, she was able to run away. She's very crafty. Do we see um, if I kind of like trace our steps back the way we came in and where the pigeon was, can, like, are there tracks leading away from the house or any signs of, like people left on foot? Uh, I would say roll a survival check for it. Interesting. Oh, many. 
23. Okay. Uh, you are, I will say it's very easy for you to see the uh, the markings that clearly show that Hugo had descended from uh, the rooftops uh, right out to the front of the house. And it's very clear that uh, he was more, more than likely the one that ripped the door from one of the hinges. Um, you do see what appear to be another set of, well, another, Another two sets of footprints. Um, one to be the small feminine foot sip, footprints that you would imagine were Zephyrines, and another that are not clear. It's it's hard to tell if it's a boot or a shoe. The size of them doesn't give you any, any indication of what even kind of creature this would have been, but something clearly took Zephyrine from this house. And another set of footsteps that catches your attention. Small, childlike footsteps that disappear heading up the stairs to the second floor of the house. We don't get it. I see our tracks, but we looked. I mean, I'll call out. Are you here? <clears throat> Show yourself, child. You're safe. Anya. Anya, if you are here, reveal yourself. You hear a silence for a significant amount of time while you wait. All you hear is the sound of your breath. And then you hear the sound of a, of a creaking wooden door. In Jericho, you immediately remember the door, the little broom clip cupboard that you had been Ooh, sleeping in. Great sleeping quarters. And you recognize that sound as you hear the door open and the, the pattering of childlike footsteps across the room. And then the creak of step after step, slowly, still listening, until you finally see the small form of Anya as she peeks around the kitchen. Her eyes glance to Francois, and she wraps her arms around herself and blinks a couple of times, and then turns and looks at all of you and tries to completely avoid looking at him as she looks down and steps over the patches of blood and gore as she tries to make her way to, you, to all of you. Once, uh, once I feel she has her footing and has passed Francois' body, I'll, I'll wave my hand and a cloak of darkness will hide Francois in magical darkness. Perfect. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, like, quickly walk up to Anya, and if she would let me, like, sweep her up in my arms, and say, let's, let's get out of here, girl. You probably should have taken us with you, I think, because this was really not a safe place. Like, no offense or anything, but... What happened? Well, we were just getting ready to make food, you know? And that, like, really super huge thing came in, and he wanted the mom, and so, like, Francois was the dad, you know, his name? And he tried to fight him, and he stabbed him in the leg, and he got furious, and he punched him in the face, and his face went, like, everywhere. And poor little Colette was right there, and I didn't know what to do, and I tried to get her up the stairs, but she wouldn't come with me, and she just kept screaming, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Daddy, and I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And he looked at me for like a second and I got really scared. So I ran up the stairs and left her here. Did I do a bad thing by leaving her here? Because I didn't know what to do. You did just fine, Anya. You did all right. It was really scary. Yes. You survived. That is important. You were able to care for yourself. Colette will be okay. I wanted to bring her like a blanket or a teddy or read her a story, but I was too scared to come down because like, what if he was still here, you know? There's lots of noises all over. It's okay. You survived. Colette survived. You can bring anything from the house. Where is her mom? We don't know yet, but we're going to find out. Do you remember anybody else being here? I ran upstairs after, and she looks to the darkness, and you see she looks kind of shocked for a moment, like, where did he go? And then, almost as if, not necessarily understanding, but um, a <clears throat> reality that this is just what it is, as she looks back towards you, and he left after what happened to Colette's dad. It's all right. You're okay now. I don't want to sleep here for one more night, okay? 
What are we going to do? I'm not sure. We bring her with us. We have to take her with us. If we don't lose sight of either of these two. And we try to figure out what happened. Make sure that the mother's safe. Where can we go? I'm not sure I trust. I'm not sure I trust anywhere in this city at this time. Well, we have two options. We go straight to the Archbishop or we go to the prison and see if she's being held there. Well, I I think that we should find a place for the little ones before we do any kind of rescue or, or trying to find out more, don't you think? Can you get word to the matron? Maybe she could look after them. Oh, gosh, I actually can. Oh, well, that's handy. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Uh, Oh, no. Wow. Useful. Oh, gosh, Virgil, even you're impressed? Oh, no, that's belittling and condescending. (laughs) Gosh, you got me a little bit excited for a second. No, I, I, I can. I can send her a message and she can reply. Oh, should I do that right now? <laughs> we don't think we have much time to think about this. We've got a bit of move on. Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, what should I say? I, I have a very limited, uh, <clears throat> limited, limited mental power. I mean, for the message. How long is it since we left her? Not very long, right? <laughs> no, you just, what, like six hours? Four to six hours? Because it's about a four hour trek to her. Oh, yeah, that's the right the issue. Is it's way out of the way. But it's no, way out, the, out of the way. Like, she can't even really meet us out here because she's all fucked up. Right, and your room and I don't have, like, you know, tactical baby Bjorns that we can, like, stab, <laughs> strap these kids to and, like, but fight oh into that. God, that would be so cute. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the movie well, Raising Arizona? No, I have yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> like a little, little lone wolf and cub. You just, oh, get, yeah. you just get strapped Aww. up. That's a samurai sword. Yeah. Thank I'll you for the bits, too. Mrs. Marley. Thank hey, you. thank you, thank you. Marley. Mrs. Marley. Thank you. Uh, I have, and because it's been quite a, been a few blue moons, 25 words or less. <laughs> we, Duh. Maybe we can ask her, tell her that we've got two kids here and we need somewhere safe. Where can we take him? Okay. Well, let her know that Zephyrine's been taken. Yes. Yeah. Francois dead. Two children with us. What's safe in the city? Need help. Uh, what is safe in the city, perhaps? Or... Where, where can they be safe? And then you got like 10 more. Okay. I think I got it. And I'll just surprisingly don't use any for you. colloquial additional terms and waste your space. <laughs> and I'll whistle a little tune. Oh, uh, gorgeous. And, oh, gosh. I and I'll, uh, I'll put, I'll uh, say, uh, oh, it, it's old Jericho stick, but you. Zephyrine <laughs> 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 is taken by Hugo. Francois dead. We got two little ones. Can you collect them? I forget what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> can she can respond back, right? <laughs> Not that she can collect them. Where where is safe in the city, Jericho? <laughs> Uh, close, I will say, so for the close. sake of this, yes, she can, <laughs> and she, um, she, you get a response back, and she, she essentially, I'm it. not going to restrict myself to those same limits. <laughs> in a like manner, immediately. In a like manner, immediately, too. and so she is going to say, um, uh, Kaziah's house, use the stone, hidden cupboard, I will collect the babies, um, Tell no one of this. Nowhere safe. Holy shit. Well, Gar, she said that we can take them to... <laughs> Be quiet! Oh, Be quiet. oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry. Oh, well, thank you. 
I will not use the spell slot to say thank you. A third level, one of my only two. Oh, God. Very cool, Jericho. Very cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 24, 23, 22. <laughs> yeah. oh. I thought you almost spit out my coffee when you said, oh, this is old Jericho. <laughs> well, most of my friends just come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Literally almost all over God, the Sorry, is that just a, a, a new power on account of all of the, cons- the souls that... Uh, that old Virgil's consumed since we ventured. I mean, uh, I mean, Garsh, I heard back. She said that we can go to old Keziah Jenkins' place. And the old, after we go to the old Jenkins' place, there's a secret stone and a secret cupboard, and we can just stick them in there and she'll come fetch them. Like the hut in the woods. Well, no, no, she had a house in, in Cyril where she lived with her husband who died of the plague. I mean, like a hidden <laughs> cupboard, as similar to the one that was in the hut in the woods. Well, I think that's what he's got. Oh, yet. gosh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought more of like it was tucked to away where no eye, Nick and I would spy. Well, yes. That oh, no, but she didn't, mention, oh, she didn't mention Let's the, go! <laughs> she mentioned the hidden stone. Yeah. But isn't Theron like, you've been there? To the house? Yeah. That's where you got the journal. Who there? Two people went there. I think it might have been the no, town. That that oh. No. No. no, no, that was the house. Yeah, the, the house. The townhouse. You broke it. You boarded up and dusty. Yeah, and you you the wrecked it all. Guards. And yeah. then you it? signed yep. the name. Oh, yeah. You said Billy was here, and you signed his name. Yeah. I don't remember an yeah. idiot. <laughs> I mean, if it were anyone but you, I'd be shocked, but. Or Jared, because this is full no recollection. Old fair. Aaron is a friend, friend a, f- uh, a fan of the old sticky. <laughs> oh, flapping. Oh, gosh. Got a bag of edibles. <laughs> so uh, all we got to do is, is and, and, and if and if there are, uh, if the folk know not to go and it's all boarded up, then that's probably the safest spot in the city. It is an excellent solution. Oh, also, uh, we uh, Virgil saw the gross pigeon went to the bell tower. All right. Then we will take the girls to the to the house, but we have to move quickly. And you all have to promise me one thing: no matter what happens on the way to the house, we do not stop. That means you. If we run in to Van Brunt, you will get your day, and you will face that man and deliver him justice. But it will not be today. Understood? Nothing's more important to me than getting these young ones to safety. Thank you. Always oh, ready. I also don't think there's very much likelihood that we'll run into him or his lackeys at all. <laughs> what, are the, what are the odds of that? We just saw him. Like, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, there they are. <laughs> He's looking into the window. <laughs> um, I think I think that that we we might run into him, <clears> but I agree with. Uh, Whatever your name is. <laughs> Zendaya. <laughs> I agree with Zendaya. Oh my god. Is it Marius, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> He's just blanking, I'm horrible. I agree with many. I think you're still sharing that flash of vodka. <laughs> Darius, let me have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to ask what, what your ever name is. Yeah, whatever you say, dude. Yeah, okay. Just chill, bro. It's fine. Uh, it's all going to be cool, uh, man. Maddie, you friend, are bro. harshing my vibe. <laughs> um, here, I feel like back. we need a second to shake our willies. <laughs> um, we got the big goofus tonight. <laughs> is there anything else that we need to do here before we go? Should we, is there anything that we should fetch? I mean, is is this, are we just leaving Francois here? That's... We don't think we can take him out and bury him in all this madness. We'll we come back Dudley. for him. Can you we have to leave him. take the children outside just for a moment and I'll be right with you? Absolutely. Are you, yes. You, you can stay if you want to. I no, just want no, to no let's outside. go outside. I'll take them outside. <laughs> I was just going to suggest something, but I, it's probably what you're already doing. So. I, <laughs> I am going to look for a trinket that we might be able to give Zephyrine when we were rescue her as well. Her name's Colette. Her last name, or her mom's name is Zephyrine. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm oh, looking okay. for like a, a wedding ring or oh, something okay, to gotcha. give Zephyrine because her husband was, her husband was brutally, brutally murdered. murdered. <laughs> That's true. That did happen. Yes. Yeah. Well, Grab, uh, if you find them, a teddy bear, a pillow, a blanket, something that can comfort them at Kazaya's. <laughs> I fucked that up. Yeah, I was like, Zendaya's. No! 
Yikes. I will. I will look. Will you join me, Ferenc? I will. There's something I'd like to handle myself. All right. I'll, I'll step outside and keep an eye out for gross pigeon. One, one, three, two. Gross peasants. I'm holding my gun. <laughs> Do we want to take a coffee break? <laughs> <laughs> what has gotten into everybody? <laughs> yeah, I guess we probably should. What was that? His Sorry. chunk. His yeah. chunk. My He's chunk. Got his chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my mind over here. I can't remember character names. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Chat thinks I should just stream uh, over to I, for one, am having a great time. I love Dungeons and Dragons. Voodoo gun loaded, chunk adjusted. That's how he loads the voodoo power. Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna get some water. So, what were, what were you guys doing? Uh, Yorgrim and I were going to step outside. Um, and mostly what I would like to do is keep an eye on the streets, the surrounding area, because I assume that there's a lot of just crazy violent shit going on, and I want to make sure that we want to make sure the kids are okay, and that nobody tries to get in the house while they're doing what they're doing, and I believe uh, the other two gentlemen are coming with us. Yeah. Yes. So and I, I've reloaded my gun with my chunk, and I'm just ready for peasants, basically, to, that, to assault us, to... Kill them. The ladies are searching, and I'm Send gonna keep while while he looks for peasants. I'm looking for pigeons, so we got all the peas covered. Yep. Perfect. Lethica will dispel uh, her magical darkness once she sees that the children are out and away, and uh, search the corpse of Francois and try to find wedding ring or any additional mm -hmm. trinkets that she feels would be meaningful to Zephyrine or Colette. Okay. So it's kindness you did. Putting darkness out for the children. Thank you. Yes, it is going to be a hard path for them both, I think, but they are strong and they will they will be able to move past it in time. I think you're right. I'm gonna look upstairs for a moment and see if I can find anything for the little one. Um, so I'll go upstairs and see if I can find, like, your room side, like, a teddy bear or just something that would be comforting. Okay, I will say, you know, it's easy enough to do. I'm not going to make you roll for it. Uh, you're <laughs> able to... Okay, fine, roll okay, for okay. it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, now you have to. Roll for it. Investigation. Okay, one. <laughs> Two. <laughs> you find I find a teddy bear, but I rip it in half with it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect! Uh, I, uh, I got a 16, so I imagine I find a wedding ring. You are able to find a wedding ring. Okay. Um, and if I can find anything for Colette, then... I will say I'll use your role for Kelsey, because I really didn't need you to You jinxed me with your role. <laughs> oh, you yeah, don't know how to roll fault. so badly, not me. No. Um, yeah. um, you're able to find uh, a blanket, and you remember seeing, um, you, re you remember seeing Francois um, swaddling her in that blanket when she was uh, dealing with her illness. Mm -hmm. And what you'll have noticed is it does seem like the the illness has is waning on her. And whether that's because her mom was able to give her the um, the concoction, Mushrooms. you imagine is probably the case. Um, but you don't know. Colette did seem to be like she was well. Um, but you you find the blanket and you find a um, a stuffy. I forget. Did, did we find out that a, a shipment? A shipment of mushrooms had been delivered to Zephyrine? Yes. Okay. Um, I would also like to look for that using my shibubi oh. stone. Um, yeah, Ooh. so I'll say you're e you're able to find a cabinet uh, close to the pantry that was um, that is not visible to the naked eye, and you're able to collect six more vials of the, uh, oh. the mushroom ointment. Nice. <clears throat> found some extra here. So I'm in handy, I think. I have found what I needed, and uh, let us join the others and make our way across the city. I'll be out in just a moment. I take my leave. Um. Sorry. Okay. Um. So I'd like to just lean down to Francois and and remove the the veil from or the blanket from you know from like his upper chest area. Um, and I'll just kind of pull his shirt apart and like on his chest with my nails scratch in um, like a runic symbol that sort of looks like a like a bee, like a sharp bee. Um, and I'll just lean down 
Corthos welcomes you back to the earth and he'll shine on you when you rise again. We'll watch your family until then. And I'll cover him back up and, and leave. You are able to do that. Bone ready. We've got to be sharp as we get through the town. Yes, if we're done here, then we, sh- we should move on. I close the door and gesture that we can continue. Should we, should we cover the girls? Uh, yeah, we definitely should. I'll take the blanket and just wrap your... Oh, you're holding. I just take my cloak. Oh, okay, that's fine. My, like, magnificent night cape. Oh, yeah. And I just, like, put it over my front. I use that yeah, we can use this here. Fashion me a Bjorn. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tie it across and just kind of make it, you know. Cool. I need you to roll a perception check for me, please. Oof. I'm spooked. I got an 11. 21. 28. 14. 21. Well, you guys can cover for me. I'm saying it right next to you. Last year you come and you see take the coming. cloak off of your face. <laughs> 15. You idiot! Um, <clears throat> what did you get, Briggsy? 14. Okay, 14. Um, with the uh, with the exception of Marius, uh, as you as you begin to make your way through the city, um, the four of you hear noise behind you, and you look back down the alley and another and you see that already it's been minutes since you left but the Zephyrine ha- or Zephyrine's house is begin has begun to be looted by what looks like 20 maybe 30 people as you hear the shouts they were rich take their shit get it there's food in here and you see people rushing in windows breaking um clearly there had been a group of people that had been waiting for whatever you were doing to be finished. They weren't going to attempt this with you around, but the moment they felt it was safe, the people of Cyril are taking back what they believe to be theirs. Um, You hear the shouts of, um, you you can hear people fighting over things that they want. Um, It is very clear that this is a coveted house and the things that are in it are probably worth a lot. And there's more food in there than what you've seen in many of the houses. And I would say you think for a second that maybe there's something you can do, but there are just too many of them. And more and more are descending on the place as uh, people are feeling comfortable going in there and taking things. I'm sorry, Francois. Wish there was more we could do. It's just things. It's just a house. I guess he's just things now. He's returned to Earth. I hope so. And you continue to to make your way through the streets. And as you walk, you see all manners of sins playing out. You see, you see guards who are brutally beating citizens for seemingly no reason at all. You see people twisted together in sexual es- ecstasy, just hidden away by shadows, but not truly hidden. You see houses being ripped apart and looted. You see guards lazy in their duty, consumed by drink and passed out in the streets. All manner of sins as you walk the streets of Cyril. And nowhere to be found is the Archbishop in any way. Nowhere trying to quell the uprising of chaos in the streets. But all the while, the tolling of the church bell over and over and over again. But the sounds of the city nearly drown it out. But you are finally able to make your way to what you remember to be the house of Keziah Jenkins. And you are a bit surprised by what you find here. Completely untouched, no guards standing outside as if maybe there's no more need for them to be here. What their reason is, only time could possibly tell, but it is still boarded up. It's quiet though, this portion of the street, almost as if even with the, the, uprising that's happening in this city, that there's something about this street and this house that gives the people pause. And no one seems to be moving towards it. You don't even see people lurking in the shadows. It's quiet. And for the first time since arriving back in Cyril, it feels safe. 
How do we get inside? All <clears throat> done the way that I, I went in previously. And you basically just pried the boards off and went in. And so I'll say you're e- easily able to pry the boards off. There are more than enough of you to do it. Uh, and you enter the house. You use the stone and you're easily able to find the cabinet. It's much more It's uh, much more akin to the broom cabinet in the Zephyrine's house. There's a large amount of space in there and you're able to set up a, a nice plush area with the blankets and a cloak or a bedroll from your bag. You're able to set up a comfortable place for the girls to stay in while they wait for um, while they wait for Maggie to join or to come and rescue them from this place. But for the time being, you have this house to get yourselves together and figure out your next steps. I think they'll be safe in here. Well, especially if uh, Miss Miss Jenkins and her husband weren't known for being uh, well off, then perhaps the, the townsfolk know there's nothing here to take. I think there's still a bit of fear around this house, what they think that oh, she was. Like cursed and such. That's right. But I think that's a good thing. Let them continue to think it. Right. It's been abandoned for a while. Any looting would be done by now. Well, I, I suppose if, if y'all didn't need me, I could just post up outside and rather than be a scared crow, I'd be a scared person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think they'll be fine. Oh, and we do need you. Oh, thank you, because that means a lot. That being said, we should try to get out of here as quickly as we can. Oh, I hate to leave the little one before she wakes up, but yeah, Tom may be of the essence. I agree. I'm worried that either <clears throat> Hugo took Zephyrine directly <clears throat> to the bishop, or she's being held up in a cell with the Inquisitor. We must find the answers to these questions. And I agree. We cannot wait for uh, Colette to wake. Let's let's give Anya. You you have to be strong now. You have to be uh, uh, here when Colette wakes up, and you'll be on your own until then. But someone who will be able to keep you safe is is coming. We Do we have to stay inside this closet and only this closet? Yes. If you leave this closet, you will not be able to find your way back in. Okay. Well, I will let her know everything that you said, and I will make sure she's okay. I think she's going to sleep for a long time, though, because I keep picking up her arm, and it just falls back to the ground. There's and no- that is a sign that she's going to sleep for a long time. There is no way of knowing how long Colette will sleep. A or, long time, I just told you. Or how long it will take for Maggie to find you here. Yeah, I don't have any way to find out how long it will take for her to get here. Do you still have the knife I gave you? She holds it up, and you realize she's probably been clutching it this entire time. That's good. You've got to watch out for little Colette. Keep an eye on her. You're in charge, but stay put here. Wait for Maggie. And a little, little on you, Miss Farron's exactly right. Now that you got a knife and you're well, well armed, and you got a lot of courage, that's real nice. I think that now you could possibly help us. Did you get any sense from Hugo where he was going and being a native of Cyril? Do you know, is there anything you can tell us about Hugo, what he's like, what his temperament is? No, I didn't, you know, I didn't commit crimes or anything because I was just an orphan in the orphanage. So, like, I never got in trouble and had to have Hugo called on me. <clears throat> but, like, I know he takes bad people and he puts them in the jail. And I know that he does whatever the Archbishop says to do. And I know that I've heard him crying. But, like, that's about it. And I didn't see him take anybody. I just saw him kill the guy, you know. The one you Friend, found. Friend, Francois. Yeah, I don't Mr. feel Mira. right saying his name because I didn't know him very well. You didn't see him take Zephyrine? I ran upstairs right after Francois died. I she tried to take Colette, they told you, but she didn't want to go. Did you hear anything, by chance? A lot of loud noises. But no talking? I was crying at the time, so it was really hard to hear. That's okay. I cry sometimes too. 
Well, we're gonna do our best to find uh, Miss Mirabelle, Mrs. Mirabelle. And we'll, uh, we'll get back to you little ones as soon as you can. Our, our good friend, uh, a matron, well, you know Matron McDuff better than, than we do. She's gonna come. She's real But nice she's, lady. like, totally a witch, though. No, she's a good one, though. You can trust her. She's on our side. She'll help you, both of you. Are you sure? Because you told me I was going to be safe at that house, and, like, I don't want to place blame on anyone, but I was most definitely not safe in that house, so... Well, we certainly cannot tell the future. But Matron Macduff saved our lives. And we owe her, and we're trying to make things right. We do believe that she has your best interest in her heart. Okay, well, if that's what you believe, then that's what I'll pretend like I believe. <laughs> that, that's good. I, that means that everyone's happy and healthy, right? This is gonna go great. We're we're all gonna be fine. Look, as long as you are able to find Colette's mom, then it'll be fine. Because being an orphan is totes not fun. There is a chance that we will see you again before Maggie has a chance to return here. I. So we need to have like a secret code word or something so that like, because you said if I open this door, then I can't get back in. So like, I don't want someone to come in and be like, hello, Anya, are you in here? And I'm like, hi, I'm here. And then all of a sudden I'm like smashed into pieces. You will recognize our voices. What if they can do ventriloquism? It's a big word. It is big I know. I read. A, I read in the in in my storybook about a little puppet was swallowed by a whale. I think it's best that you just do not open the door. Anybody who can open the door will be the only ones that are looking for you. Exactly right. So whether it's McDuff or one of us, just don't open the door. Don't respond to anybody. And we're the only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Who know where you are. Okay, so don't open the door. There is no code word. If someone is able to open the door, I will trust them completely, regardless of who it is. Well, no, it'll only be one of the six of us or the matron. But what if someone else can open it? To my knowledge, there shouldn't be anyone that That's what I'm saying. So no matter who opens the door, I will trust them explicitly or complicitly. If they're one of the six of us or the matron. Sure. All right. If nope. they're not, you've got your knife. So stab anyone else. It isn't yeah, that's exactly right. You stab anybody else who's not the six of us or her. You understand? Okay. All right. Do you have enough food? I don't have any food. Can we get something to eat? Oh gosh, we should have brought some from the Mirabelle house. We gave it all to Virgil. Oh. Oh, we have like, wolf, that wolf jerky. Oh, yeah, right. we've got, yeah. yeah. It'll be okay. I'm like really hearty. Would you like some jerky? Okay, well, I mean, if you're going to that's offer. Good, wolf jerky. That's, that's good stuff. Good eats. Yeah, because you know I'm hearty today, but I might not be hearty tomorrow, so. I'll take out a couple bundles and hand it, hand it to her. <coughs> Thank you. you. So this is for me, and then what is for Colette? Why don't you, why don't, is it Sharon is Karen, Lulwyn? I don't know anyone named Karen, but I do know I could eat all of this in, like, right now. You could, but you have to practice your survival skills now. So ration it out. You don't know how long you might be here. <sighs> that does not sound like fun. Well, it's not. I'm stuck in the closet again, and I have to share my food. And I only get to stab someone if it's not you or Maggie McDuff. Correct. On all accounts. She looks up to you, Yorgrim, and you see her <laughs> eyes start to water and her lips start to tremble. <laughs> is that really, is that really what is going to happen? Yorgi? <laughs> Quick, give me some rush. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll check to see if I have any rations. Probably have some wolf jerky on you. Yeah. Yeah, I got some wolf jerky. I don't need to eat any wolf jerky. I got plenty of meat on these I'm bones. eyeballing it with my yeah. arms crossed. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I will lean in 
and say, There's more than just the strength of arm. Your skill is in your stealth. Stay here, take care of Colette, and ration your jerky correctly. And then I'd like to stealthily slip her wherever jerky I have. <laughs> roll a, so roll a slide of hand, and then I need everybody else to roll a perception <sighs> check. Everybody, yep. watch it. It's a group. Uh, yeah. Ooh. I don't notice. Ooh. What did you say? Uh, insight? What Perception. Is Perception. Perception. Um, okay, I got 16. 13? Uh, I'm going to use a twist of dread to give you advantage. I'm going to use a twist of dread to make you roll again. Oh. It's not very dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> it is for me. Oh, 14. A uh, natural one. Oh. Uh, they all notice. Uh, okay. I just, I don't say anything. Everybody notices. I just put my head in my hand. And I'll be a little, a little I don't say a fucking thing. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank okay. you so much for all of the extra jerky you just gave me. <laughs> you're so nice. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Jorge. Goodbye, everyone. I will make sure everything's goodbye. okay. Promise. Uh, and she's uh, already biting into the jerky you gave her. As we leave, I'll look to the group and I'll say, you know, ventriloquism is a lot harder than, than it looks. You ever, you ever tried ventriloquism? I've never really had the need for it. Yeah, I thought it'd be it'd be a real cool act if I could have Virgil ma- match the lip flaps of what I was saying. But I'm, I'm no good at voices and Virgil isn't listening to hear. Look, this is this is what I thought. And like, Vir- Virgil's just be like looking around as I say, hey, Hey Jericho, you know what? I'm very antisocial. All crows are antisocial. Do you know that? Well, well, no, well, no, no, Virgil, I, I, I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> why, why are all crows antisocial? Because whenever we uh, get together, uh, it turns to murder. <laughs> See, I can't Thank you so good for the twist. Thank you. Trying. Yeah, I've been trying to help me with those beats. I just wanted it to work. Yeah, 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 you doomed us all. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh! Perfect. Jericho, I think that you should stick to your banjo. <laughs> ah, that's what Virgil told me. I think he's actually right about that. He's not helpful anyway. So I, I, perhaps also using a, a real life demonic crow is not the best vessel for ventriloquism either. <laughs> Perhaps not. Before we go, I want to say it is uh, madness in this city. If uh, I were here on my own, I would try to establish myself and find a way to spread the will of Shar. This house may be a place to start. Not, not to start recruiting, but a safe place for us that is considered cursed may be the safest place if we have to stay in this city for much longer than today, or a week, or a month. This could be our home. Oh, you gotta start carving the tenants in the fucking walls, too? Those are mine, and maybe if that would help, you remember them. Well, first of all, I totally remember them. Second of all, I know that you got tenants. I'm presuming she does, too. What are you saying, tenants? Tenants of your religion, like like the, the, like what? Oh, uh, always like David tenants. Always pray when you wake up, Female and like, make sure to eat, to, to eat three well-rounded meals a day. No, it's, it's stay positive. And if you don't brush your teeth, then you gotta go to the dentist avoid, every three months avoid, instead of every six. Avoid negativity. Nurture life. Oh, that's what I said. I thought you meant like we were gonna rent the place out. <laughs> Oh, like a home rental like, service? Yeah, but, and then we would have tenants. Oh, like tenants. Like David tenants. Like David tenants. Like a tenant, uh, like a, a... This is not such a bad idea. We could set up an Air d and <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, your material a lot better than mine. Folks. That was nice. To, to answer your question, Yes, there are tenants, but Sharans like myself, we cloak ourselves in secrecy, and we do not proselytize. I do not expect of you to follow my faith, unless you desire it. I don't. 
<laughs> Can we go? I mean, she's probably dead at this point. I think your idea is a good one. And if we need to, we'll, we'll come back here and we'll, we'll make a camp, we'll make a base. I also agree with you. What I'm worried about is if we head to the prison and we run into the Inquisitor and she's not there, we're going to have our own problems. Whereas if we head towards where the Archbishop is, we could potentially be killing two birds with one stone, if you know what I mean, where we found that pigeon. Yes, to cook two meats on one fire. Exactly. So what's it going to be? Well, we all know that the gross pigeon, who I'm sure has a delightfully na- a delightful name, <laughs> as it's hor- I guess it's more of an ironically delightful name, is roosting up, at least was, in the bell town. But I think we know that, he- that Hugo takes him to the jail. With a gal, I don't know how to pronounce it. G A O L. How do you? Is that is that a jail? <laughs> that that is where because I ended up, and she was tortured into some sort of confession. I just worry that because of Zephyrine's relationship to the Archbishop, they bypassed the prison. We have no way of knowing. I, I'm I'm simply throwing ideas out. It's a fifty-fifty chance. I think in my heart I believe that. She- she will be in the cathedral, but I think the right move is still to go and see the High Inquisitor and find out for ourselves. Especially on account of her taking a lacken to Sumerius. That's too. As long as we think we can afford the detour, and, and we're not too late, then fine. But we all have to remember that I didn't tell you anything about the meeting that I had with her, alright? As far as you all know, that was secret. And you haven't been brought in on any information. I, I, I don't think the rest of us, not to leave you high and dry and alone in, in the clutches of uh, the thigh, inc- I mean the high inquisitor. <laughs> the high inquisitor, you heard me say high inquisitor. But I think that it, it won't do do us any good for us to join you. <clears throat> She's like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have a nice pleasant romantic chat with my, my best, my best fellow. My number one fella, Sir Marius. Oh gosh, there's a gross crocodile here. Oh gosh, there's a scarecrow with a weird crow. Oh gosh, there's your grim. <laughs> All right, well. I don't mean to make light of the situation. I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> I, I understand your point, Jericho. If you if you think that I can rush over there and see if I find Zephyrine, and she's not there, I can join you at the cathedral. Even if you're you get ahead of me. I think we can be back up. Why don't we all go to the j- g- the jail? The jail. I'm hearing it's the jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, look, we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, yeah, can we just get on with his fucking rescue yeah. mission? I feel like we're on very different pages. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like, I'm struggling like, to, I'm, to get I'm on your waving wavelength. my hat to like get people out the door and on the way. Well, I would say we're walking. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, we're yeah. walking. Um, I'm, I'm still like, uh, if, if, let's go to the jail. You go in, we'll wait outside. So you, you've left the house. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you've house. left the house. I will say you do notice a couple of things. That oh, the uh, the sound <laughs> of Sweet the uh, raucous sounds of debauchery uh, has gotten even louder uh, throughout the city. Um, all the while, the bell is still tolling over and over and over again. On top of that, you see flocks of pigeons just milling about the city, far, far more than you have ever seen in the city of Cyril as they fly this way and that, perched on every, there's pigeon shit everywhere. Mm. Um, Wolf. Do we still see the, are the Knights Templar going around like beating people? Yes. Is the Inquisitors, are they still like you, going witch hunting? It's bins? the same okay. exact okay. as it had been. It just seems like um, they're not the main threat to this town. It's the city, it's the, the civilians the ones that are fucking in the streets and robbing each other, turning each other in. You see people are, have given into vigilante justice where they're not waiting for the inquisitors to come by and determine whether someone's a witch. You've seen countless people being strung up on the streets with nothing you could do to stop it. Do we get any sense of anyone at the guard level or a commoner level uh, seeing us and, and having any moment of recognition or, or ignoring us? People or seem just... to recognize you, but you are still, for all intents and purposes, under the watchful eye and the um, 
uh, under the watchful eye of the Inquisitor and no one, or not the Inquisitor, the uh, Archbishop, and no one, uh, regardless of what they're giving into, seems to think of you as a threat and it's not something, I think it would be easy to say that if anyone were to raise their hand against you, they would fear the wrath of... Um, okay. So we're enjoying some protection yes. from that perception mm. and a few we can just keep to ourselves. Okay. Yes. Um, I have a couple of questions out of character because I know we talked about it, but I felt like in character we didn't really reach a conclusion. So I know that this is a little meta, but I want to make sure that I'm on the same page before I do something dumb. Sure. Um, we, you had a f- sack of melted hag flesh that basically turned into goop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We took uh, a mask mm-hmm. from the wall Yeah. and I have crystallized hag liver. Uh, initially, that was going to be what I wanted to turn over, but I know that there were some dissenting voices about that, to potentially giving, uh, uh, what did we decide? That we wanted to keep that a secret or no? I just can't remember what we, you know, a lot of things were happening. I don't think we decided. I don't, I don't think we decided. We just discussed uh, Jericho is totally yeah. fine with... I know that there were some her. dissenting voices. Where they the, like, con- oh. the concept that giving her, like, giving her necromantic flesh, like, to us is no big deal, but in the hands of, like, a powerful witch. Yeah, could if be she's, like, right. We don't, I thought we decided we like didn't a, have to give her anything. We were just going to say that we killed Maggie when we encountered her and, there, we have her and give her the ring. Well, we're definitely and, doing that. So yeah, that, but I didn't think we even needed to touch the rest of it because Maggie replaces the need to give her proof of anything. If that's the case, I'm, I'm only saying... Know. And again, because we talked about it a couple times, but we never reached a conclusion. You know, she had specifically said, like, bring me back things of interest, something of interest. Yeah, you've wow. got the ring, oh, you've got the story you. about Maggie, and if you need to, you've got the backup hag liver. And okay. from the Mikey's mask. perspective, I think is, the mask. Yeah. And then the Jericho's mask. perspective is whatever Marius wants to divulge to get sure. to in the moment sure. is what I think from, is the right call. From a character perspective, yeah. totally understand. Yeah. I just want to make sure I did wasn't missing something. Okay. We had decided on it as a group. I didn't want to. No, you got the. All right. Yeah, you got the picture. So then, mask is a backup. <clears throat> Who had yeah. the mask, Farron? Yeah. Farron did. Why do I carry everything? I'm gonna ask you for the mask, Farron. The the tentacles are. <laughs> well, hopefully the magic like is like the evil magic is out of it. Interesting. Uh, who knows? Uh, do you give me the mask? I do. Okay, we proceed to the prison. <laughs> and for the sake of brevity, you don't have to deal with the tentacles. Nice. Oh. It doesn't I mean, try to attach to your Darn. Face. She's going to have to deal with the <laughs> <laughs> So yes, you as as you walk, you're able to have this conversation and you you communicate back and forth. Do you go to the jail? Do you go to the cathedral? Um, what what is the right right step to take? Do you deal with anything that's going on in town? There's so many things pressing at you. How do you make a choice as a gentleman approaches you rather rapidly? Clearly an inquisitor garb, covered in blood, a rapier at his side, clearly covered in blood. He's, he, he's an elderly gentleman with chiseled features. As he, um, as he makes his way towards you, he's huffing and puffing, uh, clearly in a hurry, um, as he steps to attention directly in front of you, Marius. Uh, uh, at ease. Uh, he quickly allows himself to ease. As he says... I have an urgent message from the Inquisitor, the High Inquisitor. She would like to see you now. She's been told of your arrival to the city. There have been important things that have come to her attention. And she would like for me to escort you and your friends to the jail. Understood right away. Lead the way. Let's proceed. Keep your hands and arms inside the building. There are exits to the back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but he will he will quickly jump to the front of you, and he has his hand kind of quivering by his rapier and looking this way. Is that he seems very paranoid, as if he's afraid of being uh, attacked or uh, jumped upon or something as he walks through the streets. But you see as he begins to walk that he slowly starts to relax and his muscles uh, lose some of their tension as it's very clear that no one is attempting to come close to you as he walks aside the heroes of Cyril. And he begins to ma- he begins to lead you towards the jail. So is it very uh, clear, like, who's an inquisitor, based on their garb or yes. whatever, who's an inquisitor, who's a knight's so the, templar? So the knight's templar are very much what you would expect. 
What on earth was that? That was my coffee cup. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm sure. Like it wasn't your butt. Oh, so, now uh, I won't do so it. Again. You mean colon? I'm so, like, Knights Templar are much yeah. more heavily armored. Think paladins in World of so Warcraft. So, the warrior priest from Warhammer yes. Ooh, versus um, witch hunter from witch Warhammer. Witch hunter, yes. It's sort of what wow. I'm thinking of. Leathers so versus like plate armor. armor. Chainmail tabard yes. versus, versus like Warhammer. leathers and. And Maybe even a few uh, plague uh, doctor so masters like a, for fun. It's so like a demon hunter from Diablo or a paladin from Diablo. Exactly. Perfect. Um, Wait, this sounds bad. So you are being led through the streets of Cyril, uh, through the madness that is ensuing, madness and chaos that's ensuing around you. You're being led by one of the inquisitors that is out, that had been out doing their job and he relaxes as he realizes that no one is going to uh, accost him in any way while he's in your presence. Uh, but other than that, he doesn't he doesn't talk much. He looks this way and that. He seems to be on high alert as he navigates the streets. And it does not take long before uh, you before you are able to make your way to the front of the jail. And he halts you and um, quickly lets you know that he needs to run inside and let... Um, let the High Inquisitor know that you have arrived. Your friends will not be joining you, that you will be entering alone. Um, but in the meantime, they want you all to wait here. And he makes his way into the jail. It takes maybe 10 minutes before he comes out. He looks a little, um, he looks a little disheveled, a little nervous, um, as he quickly explains that the High Inquisitor uh, is dealing with an urgent matter. Um, she'll be no more than 15, minute, 15 minutes to half an hour before she'll be ready to receive you, but that she hopes that you would wait patiently for her. And he stands off to the side, crosses his arms, and essentially just guards you. Uh, it is then that you're able to look around a little bit. And you've, you notice that the, the amount of Inquisitors and Knights Templar that have been stationed at the jail the last time you'd been here was nearly double, if not triple, the amount of guard that is here now. Okay. That uh, there, it seems to be very s sparse in comparison. What? Is he close enough that while we're waiting, can I ask him a question? Sure. Uh, oh, well, thank you for letting us know and go check, go on a check with her. Uh, we'll wait patiently, but I do have a question. Did we miss any of the... Uh, Public executions, or even private executions, I'm just curious. <clears throat> he looks at you and he looks he looks a little bothered. And he's... Why on earth would you want to see any of that? Uh, well, Isn't walking through the streets of this city enough for you? The way they're tearing each other down? For no reason at all? I mean, it's, it's awfully grim and dark, especially for Executing the... a criminal is one thing. But watching people are scared for their lives, killing their friends and family... Well, see, that's the worst part, and that's why I specified official, public, private, or otherwise. The makeshift gallows are in town, the very center. If you want to see death, you can make your way there, but there's been nothing official since the evil witch Keziah Jenkins was burned at the stake. Oh, well, the reason I asked is being in my line of work, I'm a pirate. In case that was, do you know what a pirate is, actually? I'm not, are they even, is it, are they oceans, is it? Do people sail? Do you know what the word sail means? Anyways, um, <laughs> if we get caught by the authorities, we usually quick trial and we get hanged uh, by the neck until dead. Usually. And so I've seen quite a bit of me chums uh, meet their, their end that way. And it's sort of, you know, it's a bit morbid, but it's sort of how we deal with it is we kind of place bets on how they do the hangman's jig in the last moments, you know? Could I swing back and forth? He turns around and he walks off. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, you you watch as he turns around, he walks off and he heads basically to, there's a gate out in front of the jail, a, a large stone um, thing. What? Why can't I figure out words right now? Wall? Fortuous. Thank you. There's like a stone wall surrounding the jail itself. There is a portcullis and a, a, and a an iron gate right, that right. closes. That is up because it is during working hours. And that's where your station is right outside of that. There's a small courtyard on the inside with stairs leading up to it. Think about the uh, Scarlet Monastery in World yeah, of Warcraft. Exactly Very much Scarlet right Monastery. Right. And so he leaves you outside of the gate as he heads up and he is now 
general uh, standing with the two other guards that are stationed in this area. And you remember there had been maybe 15, 20 guards just bustling around this area. Right now there are maybe five. Um, but they are all close to the actual door that leads into the jail. And you find yourself with a bit of privacy as you wait for whatever, um, whatever th- came up that caused the High Inquisitor to be late. And from, um, <clears throat> and from what you had been told, and he was shaken up about it, uh, it is very unlike her to be late for a meeting. And so... What in the nine hells was that? Is that true? I mean, uh, yeah, it's technically, but that's not why I said it. I wanted to get the information of if anyone's been hanged officially for being a witch. Well, oh. I'd like to know what's keeping us waiting. Oh, good Does thinking. you see what's going on out in town now? And we're just supposed to wait around for 30 minutes. That's why I'm worried at doing executions behind doors. Or at least torturing and questioning. Well, if Zephyrine is in the <clears throat> care of the High Inquisitor, there's no doubt she's been tortured. I just hope we didn't choose incorrectly. For like, tortured for a confession? Most likely. Oh gosh. Well, I don't know, should we wait? We don't have a choice. I mean, we could we push- We always have a choice. We could push past these guards, but that won't do us any good. I could leave. We could go to the church. If the High Inquisitor has something to say to me, I, I would prefer to hear it. And Sir Mary is gonna be able to use his sly charm and get us plenty of information, I hope. I need you all to roll a group perception check for me, please. Not good. Uh, I'm rolling pretty mediocre tonight. 15. Me as well. 10. 23. Oh, no, no, uh, 13. 14. Also 13. Oh, 12. No, 14. 16. I can't. Thank you. You may continue. Oh, God. My only other concern is if we, if I get in there, and I find out that she does have Zephyrine in a cell. Then what? We well, come back out. I tell you, we go back in, guns a blazing, so to speak. Well, I. I that would I'll be look, your misfortune. I'll look around uh, at the guards and I'll say, "Well, I, I don't mean to be boastful, but I think the six of us could probably take those chump-looking fellows. Mm-hmm. No, Not to be too mean. Mm-hmm. Jorgen could mm-hmm. probably take all of them on one by by himself. So in a single file line. As long as they come at him in an hour. I think I'm so an alley. Actually, at gate. this point, I think it could go two by two. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my thinking here is that perhaps all of the guards and inquisitors are busy with all the chaos in town, leaving the the gal the jail the jail. We've agreed that it's the jail, leaving the jail relatively. Undefended. You see a sign that says uh, Cyril Gowl, G A O L. Well, phonetically underneath, it's like, it says jail. We decided in in IPA. Did you say that there are like more guards here than normal? Less, less, less. significantly less. less. Significantly less. So I presume they're busy with all of the the vigilante justice and all of the. They can't keep their own folk. It's walking the one true path. But that said, I think that. That should be our last resort, rather than saying, oh, we got, gosh, we gotta wait 15 minutes, let's go kick in the door and kill all of the folks. We have to save Zephyrine, but I agree. I think that we don't want to be seen aiding the perception of a witch. The city would, would turn against us in an instant. We could find, you may be able to find what their plan is. Maybe there's a more opportune moment we could break her out and rescue her. I hope you're right. I agree that a little bit of prudence may go a long way here. I just... I, I almost... I wish I had a way to contact you the way that you were able to contact the, the matron. If, if, if I was to get into trouble or find an opening, I could send for you, but... Why don't we all just go up there? Oh, I think... Oh, I think our friend here said uh, that she just wants to speak to Marius. Yorgrim, it's at this point that you have been listening to the things that the Jericho has been saying about the dwindling of the guards, and you're keeping your eyes um, on everything as you're looking about. And as your friends are looking up towards the Inquisitor that brought you here, you look down an alley towards a tavern, and something catches your eye. A flash of silver 
and you realize that there are about five Knights Templar stationed around the cellar door to this tavern. It seems very strange with the lack of guards and inquisitors anywhere else. Why are so many stationed at this cellar? I need you to roll another perception check for me, please. Just me? Just Mm -hmm. Just you. You're the only one that sees this. Yeah, we're all blind and arguing. All of a sudden, William Van Brunt. (laughs) And his head explodes. Yes! Uh, 11. 11. Okay. Um, You notice that they are, they seem to be a little nervous. They seem to be a little uncomfortable. Um, I'll say with that, you don't notice anything more, but, and, and they do seem like they're beginning to mobilize. So you have time to let your friends know what you see and maybe they can help you, is what I'll say. Hey, we're over there. Is it odd that there'd be as many guards guarding an entryway to that tavern that guards this whole jail? I would take a look at the direction that you pointed at. Um, when you say that it looks like they're getting ready to mobilize, does it look like they're getting ready to go into the cellar? They look like they're, I would say, think about the, um, we're, we're gonna use fourth wall breaking terms here. Think about the bodyguards of a celebrity when okay. the celebrity is about to do something and how they'll start to mobilize and look around and okay. kind of protect certain mm-hmm. things. That's essentially how they're they're starting to mobilize and look. They're all wearing the glasses pigeon. and doing the pigeon has landed. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Well no. <clears throat> suspicious. How about I just send old Virgil over to look like a regular, inconspicuous looking weird gross crow with demon eyes? Certainly couldn't hurt. Pretty far for the course around here. Oh, I guess perhaps they, they won't. They won't notice. I, I don't want to blow our cover for not. We're trying to. We're trying to be inconspicuous. I would say that with the amount of birds that are flying around, I wouldn't even need you to make a stealth roll. They're not going to notice Virgil. I think we have time. Okay, Virgil. Uh, what? You do me a favor. Okay, I'll get, get some more. Some more breakfast scraps, and I will. Uh, why don't you go fly over there and also. And uh, <laughs> the darkness will go. My uh, my uh, my head. You hear one the of the dark. guards on the steps uh, go. What the fuck? I, was gonna <laughs> say, I stand. I position between him and the guards. Yeah. So and they're like, like ready at arms, and one yeah. of one of the inquisitors is like, just, go. Uh, just gotta stretch a little. Uh, and you'll see Virgil fly off. Back, uh, and and in in his motions, you. It's very clear that there's ascensions to him normally. That then he he kind of starts moving and acting like a normal crow, as he'll then fly over to to perch on a uh, on maybe the top of the building where he doesn't he'll be a little bit inconspicuous. Where then and where he can kind of look down at the guards and at the cellar door as uh, Jericho is perceiving through his eyes. So you can see and hear what's going uh, on, I, or just one or the other. I would probably be flipping back and forth between seeing and hearing. That's how it works, right? I think so. Maybe. So yeah, I'd be keeping an eye. As soon as there any mo, I probably once I see it, then I would kind of turn if I could eavesdrop, and then obviously be switching back and forth. Um, so I'll say because you're switching back and forth, you hear time sensitive, <laughs> hurry, um, anxious, soon, and then what you'll see, and I imagine you'll continue to keep your vision at this point versus Uh-oh. sound. The cellar door begins to open. And at first, it's nothing but darkness as the Knights Templar begin to form essentially a barrier, blocking all view from what is stepping out of this um, of the cellar. I do need you to roll a perception check for me. I'll have you do it at advantage because of your vantage point Beautiful. that you're currently at, being able to look down and not straight on. Um, as what Virgil begins to see is from the cellar itself, Looking disheveled, hair, um, uh, hair disheveled, um, tunic askew, you see the Archbishop Don- Danton Alexander Renault begin to step up out of the cellar as he writes himself. What is your perception check? Uh, <laughs> 24. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. What the fuck? 24. Clearly, um, you you watch as he begins to um, fix the the hat. Of, upon his head and and write his outfit, a clear smear of dark lipstick on his collar that he quickly hides. 
and ties a scarf around his neck. All of the guards Ooh. mobilize and completely consume him as they shuffle down a dark alley and disappear out oh, of view. Oh no. Oh God. Oh gosh. No, you're back. <laughs> Wait, do we see that? You just, just Jericho. Just Jericho. I'll snap back too. Well, I, you could have given me a handful of guesses, and I don't think I'd guess what I just saw. What was it? It's Archbishop Renault. He looks like uh, he had a very pleasant time with Miss. Uh, well, who knows? What? He looks what like about? he looks like he had a, 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 ple- a pleasant time, a roll, a roll in the hay. Oh dear gods! You got to be joking. The Archbishop. Yes, no, that well, it's very clear. No, yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the Archbishop fucked the High Inquisitor? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not. I'm not saying that. It's 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 my implication. I'm not. It just seems awful. Perhaps it is a strange, random uh, lady of the evening down in that cellar that's directly next to the jail, and the, her being indisposed for the next twenty minutes was entirely coincidental. I think I'm going to be sick. Well, now you know what to smell for when you're in there. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 that is disgusting. <laughs> what? I mean, oh. you could confirm one oh. way or another. Oh, Lathander, help me. Lathander, oh, oh. can't help you here. No, you're right. <laughs> this is beyond <laughs> the pain. Do you see anything else in there coming out? Perhaps, uh, Anybody else? perhaps, uh, hold on. I'll, I'll you go back you to look back into Virgil's uh, through Virgil's eyes, and you see that at this point all of the Knights Templar are gone. There is a large padlock and chains on the cellar doors, and uh, as Virgil scans the horizon, he can't even see a single sight of where they had headed off to. But you you would have recognized that the direction was back towards the cathedral. Come on, come on back, Virgil. Good work. You're very useful today in this adventure. <laughs> I no, I mean that's no, nothing else. Just uh, the, the 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 Knights Templar, who is pers- perhaps perhaps maybe I recognize as the personal guard of the, from the cathedral. Uh, they they were was waiting for uh, for for the Archbishop. He came out looking. Uh, he fi- his hair was quite a quite a mess, and he got a smudge of old lipstick on his collar, and he fixed himself up as he left the the cellar, got surrounded by his folk, and they headed back in the direction of the cathedral. That's what Virgil saw, at least, and I I trust his eyes as much as they are my own, because that is actually the fact. Do we think there is any way for us to get through the cellar door and find out who and what was going on in that room? Because Jorgen could probably break the lock. Wait, they locked it? Oh yeah, no, they, oh yeah, that's right, they padlocked it. So, so whomever was down there is, is still stuck down there, unless there's some other entrance. I mean, if it's the, if it's the High Inquisitor, they can't lock her down there. How much time you do we have left? Did you say last time she had a secret way in and out of her room? Well, yes, uh, in, in, in her chambers, there was a, there was a secret door where, with which I saw into when when it opened up, but so maybe there is. Maybe there's another way to get down there. <coughs> you know what? Uh, uh, when he comes back to, to to gather me, why don't you all get down there and find out what's going on? That's exactly what our plan should be. Thank you, Jericho. What color was the lipstick? Oh gosh, it was dark. Uh, I suppose this land is of dark. I would say, um, you because it's dark and the lipstick was dark, you are hard pressed to determine whether it was black or whether it was like a deep blood red. Well, are these crows even, they're not just like colorblind? Well, he's a demon crow with essentially oh, a okay. man. So you see he's in the infernal. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot more than just crow vision. It's, I wish for everything's just a actually on fire. fire. You actually Ooh. don't see clothing, so you saw the Archbishop's saggy old balls. Ew. Oh, gosh. Oh, they yeah. looked depleted. <laughs> I'd like to venture with you folks the past couple of weeks, but I think I'm going to go find an old pumpkin bag for the rest of my life. I choose to pigeon explode my own head. Yeah, I've oh, oh, the oh, things that oh, oh, so far. Oh, that's been the so, most horrific thing I've seen. Even worse, than the, even worse than the sweat room. It was pretty bad. I can say that. No. 
I don't even know. Your groom, to answer your question, it was a little difficult to see on account of it being uh, nighttime, I believe. Well, it's always nighttime here, I believe. Uh, and so I suppose that the uh, it was either uh, black or like a deep, deep dark red. You know how when you see blood and sometimes it looks black, like because of how dark. And your shirt sure wasn't black; yes. it was lipstick. Oh no, it looked like yeah, no, it didn't look like he just uh, nicked himself shaving. You looked like it was a little bit of a smooch, if you know what I mean. I guess no, I just literally said. I mean, there's no implication of my meaning. It's just a smooch. All right. Well, this, as soon as the guard comes back to fetch me, once I disappear inside and you are well out of sight, go. And luckily, I have just a trick for this situation. What is it? I reach in my pack and I pull out a crowbar. <laughs> I think you need it. Oh, God! Should we get a jump on things in case somebody comes out the front of the building? Ooh, that's not a bad idea. Are you okay waiting here? I will be fine. Don't worry about me. Gosh, even someone as gross and old as the Archbishop gets a little smooch here and there, and old Sheriff goes to things and gets nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wish I could offer you some words in these trying times. No, I... don't even bother. <laughs> Did you say Jericho's dick skips nothing or Jericho's dick gets nothing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, All you, I know. Jericho's penis is actually just an old watering can. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, Flower face style, right? After all this, I've got... <laughs> I just, got, one, I just got wood. <laughs> I'm 27% wood. <laughs> well, Marius, before you go in there, I just, I don't, you don't need words from me. I got words for you. When you're in there, remind yourself, I, Sir Marius Venthyr, is, I am not a thigh guy. I am a high guy. High on the power of my friends. And I'm going to give you bardic inspiration. <laughs> Even though you got his name wrong? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Renathir. Renathir. Sir Mary is Renathir. Renathir. That's okay. It's not, it's not a night for Tonight names. is a night for yeah. everyone to get names uh, Sir wrong. Mary is Renathir. Sir Mary is Zendaya. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right, Krimi? <laughs> hey! And Yorick, it's Brigsley, all right? Brigsley. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, Lethica, your name is Farron. Don't look at me when I say Lethica. Your name is Farron. And then Lethica died. No, I didn't. Uh, what? No, I didn't. When, when you bartered inspiration me, yeah. I will I will reach a hand out and put it on your shoulder and say, uh, thank you, Jericho. I know that sometimes you feel alone, but I swear to you, you are not. We are all your friends. Oh, all right? Gosh. Now all of you be careful down there, all right? You as well. Good luck. You, you as well. Yes, to you as well. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, you as well. Yeah, good, luck. Good, luck. Good, good luck. 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 Hey, you good luck. Good luck. And, and oh. how are you? And to you, good luck. You, you as well. well and to you. you. As well. I'm sure that inquisitor is coming. It's been about exactly 15, 20-ish minutes. Right, and then to this you, good luck. And... You as well. You as well. Now, Open now, some now get out of here, you scamps. Who? Gosh. Oh. We oh, we gosh. scuttle on down to the to the cellar entrance. Do I get you... a feeling like when as we start to scuttle that we will remain well Scoot. hidden? Or do I feel like an additional boost of stealing would You imagine a boost of stealing would be beneficial in this time, as the Inquisitors did tell you to stay together and wait. <gasps> right. Uh, and you are clearly not doing that. I think it's something that is. Um, but I will say, uh, you you turn to make your way, you say your farewells and your good lucks to Marius, and you haven't um, you haven't but walked uh, a portion of the way down the 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 alley when um, the Inquisitor comes to meet you, Marius, and he lets you know. He quickly looks around and. What did you get for your stealthy? What are you doing for stealthy oh, I advantage? Put, uh, I was gonna put pass without a trace on this. I figured. Ooh. So, we all have to roll. Um, yeah, so that's stealth plus ten. That's yep. gonna be stealth plus ten for everybody. So more than likely, he's gonna tell you he can't see your friends, but <laughs> twenty six. We could all roll ones. God damn. Well, I, yeah, I got a natural one. So that's an advantage. Twisting. Oh, is it? Oh no, you add no, ten. No, we said ten. We're not so you add your ten. normal stealth, and then add. So 10. ability checks and saving throws aren't an auto fail on a one. I would no. twist it. 
Yeah, so I would say check right, see what your stealth is. So see what your stealth is and then add that. Yeah, I'll twist, twist it. I'll twist it. I'll twist it. You'll, you'll get higher than You'll twist it. You'll twist it. You'll twist it. You'll twist it. And also with you. I would like to twist and dread that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't really care. Oh, 14. Much okay. better. 17, 27. Beautiful. 27. Also 27. Yeah. 27. Good All luck, right. gang. Lethica. Lethica, what did you get? Lethica? <laughs> Lethica. <laughs> Lethica? Lethica. Lethica, you died, didn't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> Stop it. I got a 20. Okay, perfect. Uh, uh, Bingsley, what did you get? Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, Thirty-six. Yeah, that's, our, that's just not enough. That ruined it for everybody. Uh, no, so you're you're easily able to stick to the shadows and make your way towards the inn. It seems like the inn itself is open, though it's very quiet above. Or not the inn, the tavern is open, though it's very quiet above. You can hear that there are people drinking and uh, probably more than they should be. Um, but you keep to yourselves and make your way towards the, um, towards the side of the tavern, uh, in the shadows near the alley where you are going to attempt to get into the cellar. In the meantime, the Inquisitor approaches you and looks around and seems concerned for a moment that your friends aren't here and, but doesn't seem too concerned. His, his order is to get you to the Archbishop. And so he quickly tells you she's ready for you and to follow him. Uh, as you the make your way, yes, the High Inquisitor oh. versus the Inquisitor. That's you said him. Archbishop. So oh, he's not. He, we are meeting the. Yes, the you're me yeah. meeting. Well, are you? No. I don't know. I, <gasps> oh, I just, that's why I'm clarifying. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, yes, you're meeting the High Inquisitor. Sorry, there are a lot of important players. It was um, and unless you wanted to it's ask him any questions or make small talk with you, he <laughs> makes no uh, move to talk to you any further as he leads you through back the same way that you you went the last time up the winding steps. You could hear the screams coming from the jail, from the dungeons in the jail below. Um, you are led through hallways that contain cells of people who are sleeping or exhausted or heavily starved to the point that they can barely form sentences. and. No one, uh, aside from the few that reach through the bars and beg you to help them, no one seems to bother you as you're led through the jail and eventually uh, up into the highest reaches of the High Inquisitor's Tower where you are familiar with and down that long gilded hallway that leads to her study and her bedroom. Um, as you get to the large double arched doors that lead into this area, with a quick knock, the Inquisitor waits for response. The doors slowly open. He stands halt, or stands at attention uh, at the side of the door and motions for you to make your way in. And you see that in this room, uh, at her desk yet again, her legs in tight leather boots that go all the way up to her thighs, um, they are they are crossed on the table as she leans casually back in her plush chair. She is in an outfit different from the one that you saw last time. Um, this outfit is strange to you. It is made fully of dark red and black leathers. And don't look at me like that. Sorry. This girl don't play. Um, <clears throat> and you can see that there are there are bits of blood stains on it in different oh. places. Um, and she looks like she is ready for business. It is tight and you can see every curve and shape of her body. As she leans back in her chair, she has a small gilded mirror in one hand as she uh, reapplies her lipstick. What color, oh. is, what, what color is it? Uh, where you're standing, it is clearly a very dark red. Okay. Oh, right. Right. reapplying. As she, as she, just as she looks, it. as she looks up from, um, as she that. looks up from applying her lipstick, she slaps her compact shut. Oh. I'm so sorry for the delay. I'm so glad that you could join me. I hope that the trouble in the mines was not too much for you. Uh, I will give her a very charming smile and look at her and say. Uh, no, please, do not apologize. She uh, snaps her hand. Valroth, darling, shut the door. Make sure that no one bothers me until we're done. And you watch as the Inquisitor nods and kind of pushes you in and <clears throat> slams the door behind you. <clears throat> uh, yes, I do have some quite troubling news to report. That is not what I wanted to hear. As I'm sure you can see, Cyril is quite a mess since you left. Yes. I was hoping for good news. Yes, well, me too. Uh, oh, you look tired, Marius. 
Oh, no. And no. You, you watch as she removes her legs from, from the table, one leg after another, the boots thud on the ground. As she stands up, she leans over the desk and she stretches a little bit. I'm tight as well. Been a busy day. And she slowly walks towards you and quickly moves around you and begins to rub on your shoulders. Well, I appreciate the concern, but a knight such as myself is very strong, hardy. Oh yes, I can tell. These muscles have gotten quite the workout. Let me relieve some of that tension so that you can tell me this news. Well, and I'll, I'll kind of, uh, you know, loosen one of my shoulders and say, uh, one of the tenants is, perfect yourself. <laughs> You, um, you can't see her smile, but you can tell by the way that she begins to, by the way that she chortles, that there is clearly a smile on her face. <laughs> it's like a chuckle, you know? I hate you guys! I hate you! You are not Woo! there, okay? <laughs> you are not there. Stop ruining things, Lepica. <laughs> what that I were? We're breaking it in. <laughs> <laughs> she giggles. Thank you. It's a better word. High Inquisitor, if I may. When we arrived at the mine, it was truly horrific. The ma uh, magics that were being practiced there were... You feel as she rubs on your shoulder, she's slowly moving you towards her bedroom. Nearly unmentionable. Uh, I'm gonna try to to resist and and uh, not let her like just easily push me in that direction as I continue to speak. She'll lean down. I'm feeling exhausted. Would you mind if we had this conversation in a place a little more comfortable? <laughs> the breath hits your face. Salty. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> a little bit of mouth spray. It feels like being on it the open seas. It smells like an alchemy lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Finally, they were going to get a high inquisitor. It smells like shit in here. <laughs> <laughs> if only I was Caprice. <laughs> uh. Oh, no. Okay. Uh. Well, I... You are the High Inquisitor. If you would like to be more comfortable, be my guest. Great. Then follow me. And she walks around in front of you, and she takes her index finger, and she hooks it on the right beneath the, the pin that holds your cloak together. And she begins to lead you towards the bedroom. Um, she walks towards the edge of the bed, and she pushes you down onto the bed. Oh, well. Sit, Marius. I don't know about that. All right, I'll sit. <laughs> and then she will she will sit next to you, and she will sidle up close to you, and as she crosses her leg, um, she crosses it towards you, and she rubs the heel of her leather boot up and down your thigh while you begin oh, to speak. Lord. I am I am stone faced stoic. Uh, other than being charming and smiling, I am not I'm not gonna crack. I am gonna try not to crack. Uh, please, please, I must continue. This is of the utmost urgency. Upon venturing into the mine and, and, and braving the horrors that we we witnessed, we eventually found and faced. Matron Maggie Macduff. You don't say. I was as stunned as you are. I, I couldn't believe my eyes when when we... She stops rubbing your thigh for a moment. Uh, you can kind of feel her boot just hanging there. That the almost like a tickling sensation. You know that the heel of her boot is right there in your thigh, but it stopped moving. As she looks at you, and there's no smile on her, on her face. She seems angry. I couldn't believe it myself, but when trying to reason with her and, and, and talk to her, she wouldn't have it and she attacked us. We were given no choice but to cut her down. You see a faint smile on her face. So you killed her? We did. Well, her boot begins to rub up and down your thigh again. That's good to hear. But it does cause me a little bit of pause, Marius. For I feared that Maggie Macduff was at the center of all of this. But since you left, pigeons have filled the city. Have you seen them? Flying this way and that. We have. The bells 
constantly tolling, and she reaches her head up to her, um, or reaches her hand up to her head, and she looks exhausted and tired, throbbing headache from the constant ringing of the bells. The city has gone mad. If you had killed the witch, don't you think this would have stopped? I've lost countless inquisitors to this madness. The people in the streets are killing them where they stand. Well, that leads me to my next point. I have a couple of things for you and a couple of questions. I will reach into my cloak, pull out the mask and uh, matrons, the matron's ring. We took these things from the mine. <clears throat> this seems to be some sort of horrific ritualistic mask. There were several of them, but this was the only one that we were able to recover. I'll hand it to her at this, and I hold the ring. I pulled off her hand myself. She takes the mask and she looks at it. <clears throat> yes, it could be a witch's trinket. I can think of many things I could do with a mask. And she tosses it over her shoulder onto the bed. But this, yes. Hmm. It does look to be Maggie McDuff's. I can't imagine she would part with it, given her history and what I know. So only in death would you bring something like this to me. Well, I'd have brought her your head, but... My head? I would have brought you her head. Oh, are you getting nervous, uh, Marius? No, no. Uh, but she dissolved into nothing. No. Pure... She takes her hand and she rubs it down the side of your face. You're so cute when you're flustered. <sighs> That leads me to the question. With the pigeons, the town, <clears throat> first Keziah, now Matron Magmeet Duff, who else? Certainly there must be more. Otherwise, this would have stopped. I told you the last time we met that my suspicions lied with the Archbishop. I believe there was some kind of connection between Maggie McDuff, Zephyrine, and Keziah Jenkins. And I believe it all leads back to the Archbishop. I have recently had a meeting with the Archbishop and learned a few things that give me pause. <clears throat> oh, well, and, and what would those things be? It seems that Hugo was sent to retrieve his sister from their house. She... I learned of this after... I'm not sure if you've heard, but I imagine you have. That Francois is no longer with the living... I sent my inquisitors to retrieve Zephyrine, as there is no better place to have a house than the jails. And I was told the Archbishop did not trust that she remain imprisoned here. And that caught me off guard. Why would you not trust the High Inquisitor with a prisoner? It seems that Hugo has taken her back to the cathedral. Interesting. Do you understand my fears, Marius? She presses herself up against you as she whispers this into your ear. I, I do. I <clears throat> only can think of perhaps offering my services. You had, you had perhaps- And what services would those be? Well, Marius? you had proposed perhaps a permanent position leading your temple. I can think of a few positions I would like to get you in. For now, <laughs> you give me the authority to command the Templar, perhaps we can gather a small group of them and we can lead them into the chapel and see what's going you on. You like power, don't you, Marius? Uh, who doesn't? Hmm, a deal then. I will, I will make you High Captain of the Inquisitors, but you have to do something for me. You see, it's very hard to be the High Inquisitor when you're so tight and stressed. And I don't think it's too much to tell you that a woman like myself needs a certain type of man. What are you willing to do for power, Marius? I can promise you that I would be the greatest captain of your guard. I have no doubt. That you could possibly dream of. I've dreamt of it. And perhaps, once we figure out what the Archbishop is up to, we stop these horrific witches, 
I could come back for a little victory, is it? Oh, you want to play games, do you? You think making me what? Making me wait is going to make it all the more sweet. Checkmate, Marius. I'll have papers written up. And should I be convinced that you'll follow through on your end of the deal, I will give you the power you desire. But you must prove to me first that this is not a game, and that you will return and provide exactly what I need. You have pa papers, you say? <clears throat> you have two days. Two days. Okay. Well, that's better than I would have expected. Certainly. I mean, surely we... But you know... Won't need more than two days to get to the bottom of this. If you put all of this playing aside, I could have those papers written up in an hour or two. I'm sure your friends wouldn't mind waiting. Oh, I think we might need more than an hour or two. There's nothing saying you couldn't stay longer. Well, I would say that the uh, health of the town is, is very important. Yes, and I can't do my job until the stress has been relieved. Well, you have my offer. Two days, and you can have as much power as you would like. And once the Archbishop falls, even more could be at your hands. That sounds delightful. Now, off, the, off of the... Current conversation, I fear for Zeph Zephyrine, for what I have learned is that Hugo cannot be controlled, not even by the Archbishop. So you don't have much time. Understood. He resides in the bell tower. That constant ringing is a product of him and him alone. You'll have to find a way up there if you're going to rescue her. And please, do return as quickly as you can with good news this time. And four to five free hours. Understood. And <laughs> yes. All right. Until next we meet. You may go. I will. Uh, you may go. I will give her a silent nod and I will get up and leave. <laughs> Slowly, you may go you, you slowly. You like this. Slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna need a minute. <laughs> you may stand up. Yeah, I'll... I heard you. No, no, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, will, I will get up and I will make my way out. Uh, not I rushing. I take this pillow with me. <laughs> it's part of the deal now. Uh, <laughs> I'm keeping this. It's a gift. And I will. I'll leave. And I'll find the Inquisitor and you tell him to get me the fuck out of here. <clears throat> and in the meantime, you make your way to the to the uh, to the entrance down to the cellars of this tavern. And you look around, and I will say with that stealth and the perceptions that you've done, you're able to see that you're you're not being watched. Whatever it is that happens at this space is it seems to be uh, rotationally guarded. And you are at one of those points in which there is no one here, and people don't normally come to the side. They'll maybe enter in through the tavern, and you do see people making their way and entering uh, the uh, the tavern that way. But no one comes off to the side, and so you have relative privacy. Immediately, when we get to the door, I will um, uh, touch two points on my mask, and then touch the sides of my head like this and I will start to ritualistically cast uh, a spell. It'll take me about 10 minutes to attempt to do silence. I don't know if we're going to wait for 10 minutes to crowbar this lock, but it seems like a good idea given how loud a crowbar I would is. say it. that meeting, though, was very quick. There was a lot more sexual tension that went along with it. It was probably about an hour to an hour and a half of a meeting with, um, um, with mom. Steely glances. Just so Mikey's clear. About what? You weren't there. Oh, well, that's true. That's true. No, it's fine. I, so, I, so maybe this will be. What is I'm Mikey's not entirely clear what she wants us to do. What do you mean? What she wants you to do? Like, what, did she what, ask she, what she what she's like, what she go? wants is no. She she essentially gave Marius the information that she doesn't trust the Archbishop. That she learned in a recent meeting with him that um, he nice. he took Zephyrine himself, um, and that Zephyrine is being. Um, is being guarded by Hugo, 
Mm. And that she imagines that if you find Hugo, who lives in the bell tower at the cathedral, that you will find Zephyrine, but that he didn't trust the Inquisitors, not necessarily the High Inquisitor herself, but he didn't trust leaving his sister guarded at the jail for whatever uh, reason, and that makes her uncomfortable. I see. Mayor, what she wants is to screw Marius. And so he wants, he wants <laughs> power over the Inquisitors, she can essentially give him that, but she's giving him two days to bang her or he gets nothing. And so that's what that was. Okay. Is you have two days to come back and prove to me that you're in this. Um, otherwise, the papers are off the table. <laughs> yes. Literally. She wants the D, Dampier, of course. <laughs> Thanks, Kimma. <laughs> so what is Lethica saying as she ritually casts these... Spells. I, I would say that she would be whispering um, very much to herself in this moment. You you would probably just hear just the hints of not, 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 nothing specific. Uh, uh, in fact, given the fact that I'm casting silence, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter as I eventually mm. am able to. I motion to Yorgrim. You can't talk to him in silence. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm motioning to him. And I do a, a crowbar motion. Hmm. <laughs> I spilled coffee on my hello. Hello there. Uh, and I give you bardic inspiration. Um, and I believe mechanically you get advantage on strength checks. When oh, you use a well, well, well. <laughs> we're going to open this lock with the same tool we're going to use to beat the Archbishop. <laughs> a little bit of leverage. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. And I will say, I uh, voice. roll a strength check for me, please. Don't mind if I do. And you have Bardic Inspiration, so you can do without what you will. And it's a, an advantage? Uh, only like if Nikki G judges it. Oh, 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 I'm oh, just telling oh, you what I know from my time as a DM. What? The cellar entrance. What about it? Is it on the side of the building? Yeah, it's on the side of the building. It's like down an alley, right? Yeah, it's down an alley. So there, there's an alley that sh stretches on one side, and the other side there are other oh, buildings. Okay. And so uh, down this alley is DM. pretty much deserted yeah. all at all times, to. and people don't yeah, really go down it. Though, so um, while they're use. doing yeah. that, I would kind of just walk down the alley to like where I could be able to like peek around to the front of the building and just kind of have eyeball on that, Perfect. but still be within sight of them. I'll say you're easily able to do that. You're still six, stay six, within six. the range uh, of the pass without a trace to keep your, uh, your stealth. Just a flat strength roll? Well, like, ac what, what would you roll at athletics? Be, Thank yeah. you. Uh, 26. Yeah, it's not enough, unfortunately. This is a really heavy uh, lock. Uh, as it completely <laughs> splinters into into shards. Yeah. Um, and you're able to, um, you crush the lock easily. But with the silence, there is no, um, there's no sound and nobody is alerted to this. And you're able to move the chain away and open up the doors. Uh, you alert Farron to the opening of the cellar, and you're all able to make your way down into it. Uh, for up to ten minutes, that space will be silent, and then we'll, we'll follow your room down. We'll and I will Yorgrim. say, um, it will be just the space at the door. So once you get inside, nothing that's set on the inside kind of goes out, but you can communicate with each other. Oh, I'll leave Virgil. I communicate with him telepathically uh, to basically sit watch the exact same place where he had spied on the Archbishop and his Templars, and basically to fly into the cellar if he sees anybody coming uh, dangerously. Wow, it's a living. <laughs> and you are able to make your way into the cellar. Um, roll an investigation check for me, please. Group investigation. Ooh, Ooh natural one. Four. Ooh. Can I Why twist? are we not rolling at all? Yeah, can I twist? I'm gonna twist. I want to twist. 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 find. I want to find what we have to. Five. Do. <laughs> That's one better. Uh, I got a nineteen. Okay. I actually got a thirteen. Five. Seventeen. Okay. What did you get, um, Bingsley? Five. <laughs> Uh, with I will say that's that's enough for a group because you have two large rolls a mediocre one and two shitty ones. Um, you look through the cellar and it seems to be your standard cellar to a tavern. There are casts of ale, there are dried foods, uh, sacks of flour, and it takes a bit as there is very little light down here. Um, you are able to light one of the lanterns and get a little bit of light going, and you see that. 
the pile of sacks of flour has clearly been disturbed. There are dustings of flour on the wall and on the ground. Um, but you, outside of what clearly looks like a place where someone may have engaged in a sexual tryst, there, uh, there is nothing else down here that is suspicious to you until your grim. You notice that there is a, a, a section of the of the floor that doesn't look quite right. The stone of the floor, the gap, is just a little larger than everywhere else. And you pry your fingers down into it, and you are able to pull up uh, probably like eight by ten stones that are fused together. And there is clearly a um, a wooden ladder that goes down into the earth, and a um, and some kind of tunnel that leads off in almost like an underground um, tunnel system inside of the city. Do we know from like an orientation? Uh, it looks like it's heading straight towards the gate. Got it, got it. Can we talk now? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we're outside of the 20 foot radius. Of the oh, okay, okay. That okay, would have been okay, at the back okay. of the top of the stairs. <clears throat> Good find. Is this a sex pantry? Today it was. Oh, and it smells like an alchemy lab in here. All right. <laughs> someone was making pancake batter. <laughs> of course, someone was making pancake batter. <laughs> I can say that. I'm a bard. <laughs> yeah, I can't say shit. I have to use my regular voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Could find Yorgrim. Yes, there's an... Yeah. I'll get there eventually. There's another opening here. Yeah. Looks like a pathway leads towards the jail, maybe. It's hard to tell. So do we think that's what happened? Is that that's where the, where the where the archbishop goes in and out? All sneaky like? Should we go down and take a look? Maybe we can see if they're holding Jeffrey. We've come this far, I propose we go down. We should see where it leads. I'm just worried that if we get too in too deep, so to speak. And, and Marius is in too deep, then we'll put him in danger while he's meant thrust in other business. <laughs> I hope Marius is not in too deep <laughs> to the seconds of the Archbishop. Oh. <laughs> that what you do you imply? mean, oh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I, I don't, I, I wish I could turn off my thoughts Imagine even more. following that act. <laughs> My dampier ears begin to burn a little. <laughs> well, we think we should follow it. I think we should see where it leads, but let's not try to cause too much trouble. We've already broken a lock. There will all there will be some evidence of our journey through here. I'm feeling real, real sneaky and stealthy. Lock, I'll go so. back to the cellar door and just pull it closed without it being locked, so at least I'll kind of look at it together. Well, unless you broke through the whole thing. No, it's just the just the lock. The lock, okay. lock is made of unobtainium, well, but the door was wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, pumpkins. And then the, the, four, the four dancing pumpkins. I'll lights. say you're easily able to walk down into, Jack you Lawrence. take the wooden ladder down, <clears throat> and you see that it is a straight, dark tunnel that heads off in the rough approximation of the jail. And you begin to walk. It's just straight, um, hewn out of the very earth beneath Cyril. Is there any other, like, are there any other directions that the tunnel goes, or is it just from this tavern to the jail? It seems think? like it's just straight so far. Well, we shouldn't say a word just in case there's, uh, you know, the noise echoes, but let's go quietly, and let's stop if we see anything of interest. I'll wrap some leather around my hooves. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yes. it's, it's it's not a it's not what you would expect from like a subterranean tunnel. It looks it is hewn straight out of the earth. So oh, it is no. it is like dirt that you're trotting okay. trotting on. That is until you get to what is clearly an iron gate, and it covers the entire path. And there is a big what appears to be magical lock on it with a symbol that you have never seen before. And as you, as your eyes adjust and you look through it, you can see that past this, past this lock, and I would say it took about 15 minutes of travel to get to this point. You can see that the, the dirt slowly turns to cobbled stones as tunnels clearly, um, 
clearly man-made tunnels, sconces on the walls with um, torches that could be lit or lamps that could be lit uh, hanging from them, tunnels that uh, wind off in various directions. Do you think we should try to get through it? Oh, I've never seen a symbol like this before. Let me let me take a take a look. I guess this, who, which one of us would be the best one to look at a, a spooky magic lock? <laughs> oh, I mean, I could probably. Yeah, don't you break into all sorts of places being a pirate and all? I'd probably take a look. I mean, a genuine criminal. Voodoo gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how I get through most locks, but this one. Why don't you take a look? I think I might have a trick up my sleeve. Oh, I'm gonna go trick? down and look at the. I hope your trick's quiet. Lock. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> you look at it, and it, it looks tr- like a large it? padlock that that is radiating with some kind of magical um, ability. What it is, you're not quite sure. Um, but the padlock does not have a spot for a key, like you would expect with a normal lock. Hmm. Mm, indeed. Uh, I want to try to like. Is it? Cut, is there like a magical sheen across the entire door, or just opening the gate? Like, could I reach through so the bars? Just the lock, right? the cavern or the the tunnel that you're in is very small. It is like the size of a a room door, right? It's like one person. You'd have to like walk in a straight line. It's very very um, tight. And once you get to this, this is clearly locked off from people being able to travel. Should it be found? What's um, the lock on? Huh? What size the lock? It looks like there's a lock on either side. Both? Yeah. So it can be unlocked and Is locked. it like a door lock? It's not like a padlock then. It's like a It door looks lock. like a padlock, but it's magical. There's no keyhole. There's no keyhole. And so you imagine that it is locked and unlocked under different means. So depending on which way you go is the <clears throat> side you would use. You get what I'm saying? It looks magical in nature. And I can't do much about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> gosh! You had a trick. Oh, I thought that I had learned spell magic, but apparently I had. <laughs> oh, well, gosh! Neither have I. Uh, well, let me take a look. Perhaps does, I'll, I'll see if this magic looks familiar. <clears throat> and I'm gonna lean in. Am, am I able to uh, discern anything about the type of magic in the runes? Because there's runes on my banjo and all of that. The it's not magic. a rune. It's it's a oh. it's a symbol. So like, think about if you went to some hoity-toity house and you're going through their gates, they would normally inscribe like a very uh, stylized first letter Ooh. of their name. Um, it is very clearly some kind of symbol that is supposed to represent a house or a lineage oh. or something. Uh, maybe a, um, like a you, the Knights like Templar. Yeah, like a crest of some sort, uh, but it's not one that you've seen before. I got nothing. Does it look like if the magic of the lock was dispelled that the symbol would disappear, or is it like on the face? It looks like it's carved into it. Okay. I believe I have the trick. I cast Dispel Magic. (laughs) (laughs) You cast Dispel Magic? Gosh! Yeah. Okay. You (laughs) will. Let me just open my hit points. <laughs> oh no! You take twenty-one points of psychic damage Holy as shit. you cast oh, dispel yeah. magic on this lock. You all watch as the lock itself begins to reverberate, and it's almost as if your <sighs> magic is thrown back at you. And like a ton of tiny blades, you feel your mind begin to shake Ouch. and pulse as it. This, the headache that you have is almost, uh, almost uncontrollable and you feel like your mind is turning to liquid. Ugh. And you take a significant amount of uh, psychic damage, Jesus. but the lock does not seem to budge. <gasps> uh, Are you all right? Other girl, you Miss okay? Other girl. Uh, what happened? I attempted to open the lock with just, my faith. Just take a moment. But I, it rebounded somehow, it has. Well, I, I am in a great amount of pain. Well, but... I have faith you'll feel better soon. I'll use healing word at a second level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I, I didn't have that trick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I had it, but I'm glad I waited. Eleven points of healing. And I rolled pretty poorly, so. You know, Farron, maybe Lefika loosened it up. <laughs> if you try, it'll really work. Oh, I don't think so. It looks pretty set. Why don't you try using the triangle thing? <gasps> the viewfinder. That's a good idea. Just in case, I'll I'll take out the witch's stone and see if anything looks different through that lens. I will say you look through it, and though the symbol doesn't change, and you don't see any indicator as how to open the lock itself, you see that the um, entire thing glows with a faint violet light. It's a toilet. What does what that mean? Yeah, I mean, the always... All the magic of the witches has been very like that. I would say it's not it's not the same lilac oh, that you're thinking uh, of the excuse eyes. Me. It's it's a it's a darker purple. <laughs> okay. Gosh, oh, geez, which I is a good purple. distinction. <laughs> so you know there's a difference between violet and like lavender. Well, sort of different colours. Well I do now. <laughs> so, the difference between sage and fern. Uh, I, what the hell? I, I, I bet that there's some sort of password or, you know, with my kinds of magic, if there's power in, in, in words and, and tonality and music and it controls the weave, I bet there's some sort of password we gotta say. Unless we know that word or magical incantation or something, I don't think there's any way we're gonna get through. Especially if it can't be tampered with with the power of Shaw. I'd be worried of saying the wrong thing if trying to override it did that to Lethica. maybe the wrong word cause a similar effect you're probably right I think that maybe perhaps if we're able to find <gasps> gosh I may have got an idea what is it? go on well if the archbishop himself uses it to sneak in and out to his secret uh, best gal's chambers Perhaps it's something that he knows that we'll find in the cathedral. Huh? I think if he had a password and he had a secret tunnel, he would not have come out of the cellar door and walked through the city. Why would he come out the entrance of this cellar if he had this path? Well, I think the pathway connects to this one is, is, is my implicate is my inference. So it doesn't look like he's walking in and out of the of the, of the jail. But they they met in the room behind us. That's right. Well, the flower. Someone came for the flower. Remember they're the making battle. pancakes. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't know if we can deduce that the archbishop would have used this tunnel because he came out the cellar. But we've gone down and like. I would yeah. say you have suspicions that Inquisitor Mayville was the person he was in here with, you never saw her leave. Yeah. Oh. So she used the passageway. Right. She used the passageway. Oh. He just went in and out him. of the tab. Okay. Well, Mikey and I are just dumb. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe Sir Marius will learn the password. He has no way of knowing what we've seen, but maybe you will like, hey, Garsh, you're looking mighty fine this evening. You want to tell me a password? <laughs> you want to meet in a cellar? <laughs> Oh. I hardly even know her. Well, I think I think now we, we have what we need to know for when we talk to Marius, and the next time he meets the High Inquisitor, he'll he'll know what to ask. Suddenly. Hmm. Hmm. We might have a way to follow this path if we want to see where it ends, but I'd have to go alone. Well, does that sound my, my strongest magic was not able to break the lock, so be very careful, or you will suffer the same migraine I am experiencing now. <laughs> we hate migraines. <laughs> it, it's right back here. It's just at the top, you know, at the, at the base of the neck. Too. I mean, swear for sure if you got a way to, to, to do it. I'll, um, I'll reach my hand through, just carefully through the bars and just kind of test that. Does anything happen? You are able to reach your hand through. Doesn't seem to do anything. Alright. I'll give it a go. Um, I'll take my staff and kind of tap it onto the ground and it will glow with blue light and I'll begin to shrink um, down into a, a tiny little field mouse. I knew you were going to say field mouse. I, how'd you know? I just know you. 
<laughs> oh gosh, did we do we know that you can do that, Miss Farron? <laughs> That's mighty impressive. I don't I know think if we've seen her do that. Oh yeah, maybe we have. <laughs> I'm still impressed regardless. <laughs> Maybe um, we have. Both so I will jump through, you know, jump through the bars <coughs> and scurry down. You the... attempt to, and you will take. Oh no! I knew it. Don't worry. The mouse dies first, and then <laughs> this time die. I rolled nice. Well. Oh, uh, nice and so well. She's a little mouse, and she's crossing through bars. As her body transforms out of field, thirty-one position, points she'll of be psychic damage. The bars. Be a Tinkerbell situation. As you, as you magically attempt to make your way through this uh, using your druidic magics to transform your body into a field mouse. As you attempt to move through, you are blasted back and you watch as this tiny field mouse is forced back from the uh, from the bars and slammed against the walls. Uh, rock tumbles loose and lands on your body as you're there kind of twitching in pain as you take 31 points of psychic damage. You feel your tiny little field mouse brain uh, pulsing and explode. throbbing <laughs> and feels like it's going to explode. I don't know how many hit points I think a field, field mouse probably has one, less than so I think you take 30 points of actual damage to so your you, So she be blasted, hit the wall, then turn back into her yes. basically. And so as you're, as you're slammed by this rock and you twitch, you watch as her body uh, elongates and becomes fair and yet again. So I take 30 from You take my... 30 from yeah. your pool, yeah. Well, well, I mean, it worked. <laughs> if it were reaching through. Well, my, my Where are you okay? Oh gosh, Miss Miss Farron. Thank you for asking. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, oh, touch me. Oh. I try to spit through the through the bars <laughs> and see what happens. You spit through the bars. I'll just sit on the floor. Gosh. I, I look at Farron. I look at the bars. <laughs> so so spit works. I, I rip the off bars. a little bit of like rotting flesh from my side, <laughs> and I throw it through the bars. You throw your rotting flesh through my, the bars. My uh. I, I ain't the smartest scarecrow in the pumpkin patch, but my presumption is that as soon as if if it's your magic or your mind, your head is going through, it, it's it's keeping out uh, perhaps our souls, those that got them. So the thing is, I could teleport through those doors. I don't. Um, but I think I might explode into a red mist. Well, maybe not red mist. Maybe like a, like a grayish brown mist. I think your trunk would fly across that before you back through this hallway if you would have to. <laughs> your trunk would be. Hey, I would say, based on what happened to Farron, you imagine that something similar would happen to you as well. I'd say you're smart enough. I'll only make you roll for it. Farron, well, that, that's that's very. I I knew you were mousy, but I didn't know it was literal. And you get healing order in the second level. <laughs> wow, very kind. <laughs> I would say at this point, Marius, you have been led out of the jail, and um, you have been uh, Valroth, the same Inquisitor that led you in, is also the Inquisitor that leads you out. Uh, he seems very uncomfortable, like he like he believes he knows what happened behind those doors, and he doesn't say anything about it, but he tries to make even less communication with you than before, and he deposits you right outside of the gates to the jail, and your friends are nowhere to be seen. Uh, Machine. so I would try to, as I'm leaving, you know, again, stoic in nature, respectful to the, the Inquisitors, trying to pretend like, you know, everything's cool. I'm going to be your boss someday. <sighs> and your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I would, um, once I'm outside, mm -hmm. I would walk away from the prison and maybe like around a corner and find like a stone bench or something that's not within eyes reach of the prison, but maybe, you know, within eyes reach of the alley that my friends went down and I would sit down. Turn into Shepard. <laughs> and just put my head in my hands. <laughs> I'm silently pray to Lathander. <laughs> I will say it's easy enough for you to find that. Exactly what you're looking for, you find. Uh, you're about a stone's throw away from the tavern. Um, and you patiently wait while you pray to your god for guidance and uh, piety. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've been foiled by this gate. Um, so why don't we go back up so we don't miss the uh, holy knight returning from his uh, excursion. It's been more than an hour now. I think we need to get back right away. I agree. You got my 11 points of healing, right? 
I did. Okay, good. I feel, <laughs> I feel somewhat better, thanks good. to your oh, healing gosh. words. I try to be supportive. You know, they say that if you... If you're healthy of mind, and you do this as you're walking back to the end <laughs> or to the tavern, we walk, we, go, we walk and uh, it seems as if Virgil's not reported anything. Mm-hmm. I presume, and I'll, I'll try to look around for Marius. I'll uh, just to really quick to make sure I'll give myself a uh, bonus on stealth, and I will quickly peek out before anyone else can can get out the the cellar door, just to make sure that I'm not seen, but also that um, there isn't anyone out in the immediate vicinity, and then when I see that it's clear, I will invite the rest of the party. So you peek out, and you see guards round the corner down the alleyway. They had just walked past the cellar, and for whatever reason, didn't notice the fact that the, um, that the, at least with the way they're walking, they don't seem like they notice or like they're in a rush that the cellar had been broken into. Uh, Almost as if they're so used to this patrol and nothing being wrong that they didn't even bother to look as they walk past it and turn down another alleyway completely out of sight. And as you wait for them to disappear uh, into the darkness, you usher your friends up and out of the cellar. You slowly close um, the cellar doors and try to right the... um, the lock as best you can. And you glance to the side and you see Marius sitting um, just a handful of feet away on a stone bench, his head in his hands. Um, It's hard to see what he's doing, but there's, uh, he looks from this vantage point, almost sorrowful. Go to Marius, I will be with you in just 10 minutes. Oh no, it's too late. I rush up to Marius. She's dead, isn't she? Oh, oh, oh. (laughs) Briggsy, ah, uh, no, 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 Zephyrin's not dead yet. Why so fucking glum? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, where were the others? Are they, are they coming? And you watch as I, I'm assuming everyone else Ooh, is leaving. Yeah, away. I, I will take ten minutes out the door, and so I'm Marius. going to use my cantrip <clears throat> ending to repair the lock in the door. Nice. Yes. Oh. I will say you're easily able to do that. And then I will join them once uh, ten minutes <clears throat> passed. You look like someone's died. What I'm happened? gonna be honest. All right. Are you all right? All right. No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I just have a lot on my mind. Uh, I, I had, a, I had a long talk with the, uh, the High Inquisitor. It's, I have no doubt in my mind that, she, that she was down in that. Cellar, wherever you guys went, uh, I would bet, every gold piece I've ever seen in my life that they had met, prior to me talking to her. She even mentioned that she recently met him. She was reapplying her lipstick. Uh, they they absolutely were down there together. What 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 did you find before I go any further? Secret passage. Well, they were fucking in the cellar, and there was a secret passage. Secret passage. Like where did it go? We uh, follow it. It went to the jail or gaol. How? No, we say agreed that, that it's jail. Really. You've, and we covered that two hours ago. They were. It, it they were having the a gay old time. Oof. Um. <laughs> yes. Um. So anyway, basically Someone confirmed what we suspected. <laughs> but the gate that goes to the prison had a very powerful magical lock. And we See. didn't have a means to get through it. We tried spelling it. We tried throwing my chunk through it. We tried um, well, fair and turning into, turning a, field into mouse. a field mouse and, uh, and walking through it. Um, what, did we try anything else? No, the two we'll of you. Oh, let the get whisper two. into it. The two of you do look tired. Are you all right? There's like blood coming <laughs> Attempting to interfere mask, yeah. with this protective barrier was very taxing. I, oh. I'm only just now uh, recovering and, uh, from my headache. Okay, was quite a shock. Well, so, sorry, continue. No, just so anyway, I mean, this is clearly how she makes rendezvous with perhaps not just him, but maybe other important people around the city. I'm sure you're right. We, we, we got to talking, and, and she was very, very forceful. I have to be honest with you, I... I don't know if I can go back up there. Why not? Well, I'm afraid of what I might do. Oh gosh, you're gonna kill her in, in an act of, of anger? I might get angry. Oh. Listen, uh, let, me, let me finish first. I spoke with her, and, and, and she still is, is acting as though she doesn't trust the Archbishop. So either she's lying, or she's meeting with him under the guise of, of something. Trying to get information from him, trying to pretend like she's still on his side. Something along those lines. She believes, as what she told me, is that Hugo, 
uh, descended upon the Mirabelle's house and took Zephyrine to the Archbishop. The Archbishop did not trust the prisoner, meaning Zephyrine, to be under the High Inquisitor's watch. The High Inquisitor felt that this was strange, felt that it was odd, it was out of the ordinary. Uh, she informed me that Hugo lives in the bell tower, and that's what it is, is the cause of this in, in incessant ringing. And she also is upset that there are all these pigeons and feels that we didn't do a good enough job. She thinks that Zephyrine is somehow in league with both uh, Kaziah and uh, uh, Madam uh, Maggie McDuff, McDuff. Maggie McDuff <clears throat> and, and that they're all connected to the bishop in some way. Now. I will say, um, because she was trying to seduce you, I didn't do a good enough job. She's also, she mentioned to you that Hugo seemed to not be able to be controlled by yes, the High Inquisitor. Yes, yes. And essentially, she, <clears throat> what she wants of you is to kill him. Okay. That he needs to be taken. By the Archbishop? Or the or, Arch sorry, by the okay. Archbishop. Okay. He's okay. like a threat that can't yes. be controlled. Um, and that what he did to Francois was unacceptable and that he is clearly needs to be needs to be taken care of. Okay, so I will I will relay all of that as accurate as I can. I was trying to take notes, but I, I like started to write some things down. Yeah, but then she was just like, yeah, really? Very overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, so I, I tried to gain leverage. I, I, I tried to, she had offered me a job previously, as I had mentioned. I decided to see if I could take her up on that job and essentially have control of all of the, the inquisitors in this town. I figured it could be a boon for us. We could gather some inquisitors, march into the, uh, the, 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 the chapel under official business and, and, and see if we could get to Zephyr. Unfortunately, that was met with a bargain on her end that I would have to do something incredibly uh, lustful, which I am not willing to do. A bargain on her end, you say? Yes, she, and she mentioned paperwork and it was all very... Well, why Uncouth. wouldn't you do it? I mean, if you're going to get something in return, that powerful, I mean, why not? I mean, clearly she seems like she has good intentions. If she wants us to maybe save Zephyrine and, and deal with Hugo, and, and she agrees that the brutal murder of Francois was unacceptable, I mean, I'm starting to take a side on this. First things first. I'm not entirely convinced she's not lying. Uh -huh. <clears throat> something about her. It's not just her overt provocativeness. There's something about her that I don't quite believe the things that she's saying. And maybe I'm wrong. Well, uh, I, I may have misinterpreted something, but did an old uh, exploded Dudley say that she, that she was the one that had him spread all them witch balls? He was beginning to say something along those lines. He, he, he didn't quite get it all out. Two, you know better than anyone what it's like to be alive for far longer than is intended by the gods. I have had damn near 100 years to think about the mistake that I made, all because of lust. Oh, that's fair, but I mean, it's not like it's the same thing. I mean, it's not like, you know, just because, you know, you fucked one. That lady we heard down in the in the in the basement. Unfortunate. Oh, sorry. Wait, which lady? The lady that that spoke of Marius down in front of the amber. Oh, that Lotto basement. Lady. Oh yeah, yeah, the crooked house. Oh, why a lot of you know? There's a song from where I'm from called. Right, and by song, it's like, well, loving this tavern cellar, living it up when you're underground. Oh, gosh. It's sort of weirdly specific to these two scenarios. Gosh, you gotta teach me that when we have some time and, and there's not danger afoot, and I'll, I'll, I'll commit yeah. it to memory. Yeah. We'll buy a group of bards called the Aerosmiths. Oh. I guess I didn't realize you fletch <laughs> arrows instead of smith. Oh, the arrow fletchers would have been more appropriate. Sir Marius, <laughs> do you think we should all go to the uh, the bell tower and, and go bring justice to, to Hugo? Is that, is, that, is that the best out outcome here? You don't know that this is not different. That thing that you all witnessed in that basement owns my soul, perhaps for all eternity. For one mistake that I made in my life, I will not repeat it again. I'm not perfect, but I will live my life by Lathander's tennis to the best of my ability. And if I am forced to go back up there again, and that 
woman or whatever she is is forceful with me, I may lose my temper. Okay, uh, settle down. No one's gonna force you to do anything you don't want to do. Sounds like we can go to the tower, save Zephyrine, and go from there. We don't need the Knights Templar. We don't need the Inquisitors. I, I understand. We can do this without that. You're right. I, I just simply was hoping to help. And you're right. We need to make haste, like Jericho suggested to the tower. We need to figure out a way in. I'm sure it's going to be guarded in some way, and the Archbishop is going to be looking out for us. We don't exactly blend in, which is why I was hoping to have the power of the Inquisitors on our side. But that's neither here nor there. We go in, we, we hope to find Zephyrine. The High Inquisitor believes she would be in the tower with Hugo. And yes, like she said, she fears the, the, that, that Hugo is, is unable to be reasoned with. He cannot be controlled. And I do think that deep down he is a gentle giant, but if he's out of control, we might have to fight him. We should be prepared to fight, but there may be a way to calm him down. We are new to him, and sometimes a new voice can be a breath of fresh air when you are in that state. And we, we showed him kindness. At least several of you did. I, I hope that he recognizes that. I, I didn't get a chance to give him a present when he was feeling afeard. You may still get that chance. Either way, we should try to fight him. We should try to hurry. Right. First things first, how are we going to get in there? Do we think he'll let us into the church? Uh, I would say that she told you that it was heavily guarded and that most of the guards, the Knights Templar, had been stationed around the cathedral. Your only hope was to find a way to scale the bell tower. (sighs) Okay, I I, I, I relay this information. She's also given me two days to respond to her offer. I guess we'll deal with it then. I don't have to see her before then, and I'm hoping never again. Well, I, I suppose if we do the what needs to be done, then perhaps you won't have to make a decision you'll regret. So you're trying to tell me that if you go in there and fuck that whole Inquisitor, you can command all the guards to stand down? And we can just walk right up there and deal with this? Well, I, I didn't read the paperwork, and of course, you know, perhaps if we do try to roll up, the Archbishop overrules them. They don't listen, and he doesn't let them in anyway. Or perhaps there's some sort of coup where they fall to infighting. I don't know. It was just an idea that I had in the spur of the moment. Are you offering to take his place? Oh, please, by all means. I mean, if, if that was an option, I mean, I certainly, I wouldn't hesitate. And you could but, be sure to be thinking about the Archbishop the entire time. I don't think that office stands. Here's the thing, right? I think, I'm thinking back to, 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 to me, to my early days of poverty, before I was a captain, Ooh. when I was just a sailor. And as this is happening, you were walking towards the yeah, cathedral. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I remember a, a man at a cloth. I think he worshipped Lefanda. And I think what he told me was, Lefanda says sometimes the ends justify the means. Lefanda has never said that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he did, now, and he did, and, and, I, and look, now that I'm thinking about it, yes, he said, sometimes you have to get your boots dirty to achieve salvation. Do you or... really think that you're <laughs> preaching the books to me? Well, it might have been a different... Keep going, Briz, you haven't thrown by this tale. It might have been a different version. Name uh, one tenant. One. Uh, a... Do you a, even know how many tenants there are? A, a, uh... An opportunity taken is uh, an opportunity that you wouldn't have had otherwise yeah. had you not done it in the first place. You've, you've done some despicable things as I've known you, Briggsy, but this is this is pretty low. Especially after I've given you justification for why I will not break this vow. Look, maybe it was an offender, or right? maybe it was some other guy, right? Same idea. We talked about the sun and golden color. Definitely wasn't the thunder. All right. There are a lot of deities of the sun. Look, I'm just trying to convince you to fuck the High Inquisitor, all right? Look, what if I paid you? And it's right? at about this time that, you, involved, that right? you get to the <laughs> cathedral. And you clearly see that there are tons of Knights Templar guarding the entrance. And as you, even if you were to make a motion to move towards there, none of them seem to be willing to allow you entrance. No one is allowed in the cathedral at this time. 
for what it's worth, I agree with you, Brixie. But if it is uh, against your faith and you have taken the vow, you must do what is right in your heart. What is right and aligned with Lathanda. That is the, your first priority. I will nod. As far as this bell tower goes, I should have no issue. You all look up at it and you see that there are many bricks and things protruding from this. This is a well-made bell tower, but it's seen wear over over the many years. And you imagine it will take some time, but it does not look like it's unscalable. <clears throat> it looks like you could find a way to climb it. Certainly couldn't have waiting for it to get darker. Ah, but, oh, gosh. Hey, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have any issue. Uh, what about the rest of you? Well, well, well no, I... <laughs> I, I thought I was going to have to fly up there, and gosh, I didn't want to have to do that. Oh, I wouldn't have any issue climbing a hundred foot tower. Well, no, can't you just go and you just take a rope and tie it around one of them there? Sta- There's like a bajillion statues on this thing, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. There are, there are outcroppings and statues. I mean, they're all covered in pigeon shit. On that same, but that your oil? Yeah, you would be able to climb up some empty stone pockets and... Statues and things to get up there. If you could throw me a line. Yeah, sure, but this is a perfect time to also talk about that tenant to perfect yourself. Work on it. Climb the tower a bit easier next time. Uh, well, it's not really about um, the scalability. It's more about the. Uh, it's sort of like a like a like a like a smooth stone face of a building, you know. And just because you got cursed and can walk up just with your own two feet, uh, you give me a rope, it'll be no problem. Yeah. Uh, but how many guards are, uh, I want to look and I, to see how many guards are, are guarding the, the front door of the bell tower. Uh, or is it connected to the... So the bell tower is connected, so you have to think about it like a large cathedral, right? So there's right. a bell okay, so tower it, that is part of it. The guards are all towards the front where the doors are. And you could go around the side or the back and make your way up. And more than likely you would not be noticed for the sake of brevity. <laughs> Oh, yes, we'll, promising. We'll, we'll find a, we'll find a moment where we, where we have a, 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 an, an access to to one of the sides. I will climb up with a rope, uh, assuming we have enough uh, rope for that as an aside. Um, and and I will I will tie it off and drop it down, and we should have no problem scaling. Ever since we started playing Ice Pound, everyone's like, "How much shit do I have?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I I would just we have twenty three you know, feet. <laughs> as soon as it's dark enough and we won't get discovered, I'll scale the building. Okay, that sounds. Like a real great idea. I hopefully Hugo's still there. Or actually, maybe we don't want him to be wet. Well, we still we hear still the bell. Yeah, right? the bell is oh. just constantly chirping. Yeah, he's like doing. Oh, he's up there, and we believe that Zephyrine is with him. So you guys are gonna climb to the bell tower. You, yep. Hugo is in quasi Perfect. mode. I don't know how dark it is. I assume maybe we might. Have I mean, it's always climb. dark, yeah, so I, you can harder. you can do it now. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. The plan and is so, is that we would wait for every the. In a sense that there's a time where the coast is the most clear. Yes, you wait a while, coast, yeah. you you get used to the guards pathing, and then you jump, and you choose to climb and scale. Marius goes first because he has the easiest time, and he directs you from below as he tells you where to place your hands and what uh, what stones are stable enough to grab onto <clears throat> and what alcoves to um, climb into, what statues aren't going to move. And it takes a while. I would say it probably takes you about an hour just with how long it takes takes to get all of you up safely. Um, the constant ringing of the bell is driving you crazy, but you and it's louder and louder as you scale this tower as you get closer and closer to it. Um, but after about an hour, you are finally able to pull yourself up over the edge of this tower and into one of the arched um, openings, stone openings that um, leads into the bell tower proper, and I need you all to roll a charisma saving throw for me, please. Oh, oh, what the? Um, may I, I request that when Briggsy attempts to climb, it's the rope is tied to a, a gargoyle, but instead it slides <laughs> off like the cement bag from Home Alone 2 and just fucking just pop it. Jesus. <laughs> charisma saving? Wow, well, I fucking fail. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I didn't pass that. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Is this oh, worth twisting? What do we think? Uh... I would like to twist it because I have a chance to do well, and I just roll poorly. I, I don't really. I would like to well. twist. That's two. I wonder if we have a prop plus one to make charisma. Yes. Yeah, well, same. if you don't feel like you know, I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let it ride. I don't run. know. It's up to you. I'm re-rolling because I I get plus seven, yeah. so I'm trying to get better than. Come on. Yes, I got a twenty. So twenty-seven total for me. 
Yeah. Well, you've got a natural 20. Yeah. Oh, well, um, got to use a twist to dread. Oh, no, you used a twist, so I, oh, I will not do that. We don't thank do dueling twists. <laughs> yep, yep. Thank you for being kind. But it actually doesn't matter. Oh, Merits. <laughs> All of you feel, I just DC wanted to be cool dirty. and make it feel like the DC wasn't so high, but it is, <laughs> for this reason. Um, all of you feel your conscious begin to fade from you as you see darkness. Marius, you've seen this vision before. You in a burning church. Remember your dream. That vision where you slayed man, woman, child, it didn't matter. As you, as this, the basement of this church fills with flame, charred corpses of vampire men, women all around you, you're completely overwhelmed with wrath. As you look forward and in the smoke and in the flame, you expect yourself to be wholly consumed by the fire. As you stare at the figure of a winged demonic boar skull, the head begins to offer you power. Is this through, just yeah, through wrath, control your wrath, and you can have all the power that you desire. And you feel it, the wrath consume you. You want nothing more to, than to destroy. War is the way, death belongs to you. You raise your arms and all of the skeletal remains of the vampires begin to rise. An army of fledglings at your very control. And all you have to do is give in to wrath. This is the way. Briggsy. You've just finished trying to pry that final eye out of the statue. And you feel as you as you fall and the statue is going to come down and it is going to crush you. The croco crocodile god statue. <clears throat> but time stops as a strange feline creature with six legs, feathery wings, and no face and a serpent's tail begins to offer you the power to accept greed and have everything you've ever wanted. All you have to do is accept the power of greed and everything will be yours. It is an easy choice to make. Of course, you, of course you accept greed. The portal opens up beneath you and it saves you from being crushed as the crocodile statue falls and should completely crush you into smithereens and bloody viscera. But instead, you find yourself in this strange portal with doorways into vaults and banks, the ability to get anywhere you want with just a simple wish, everything can be yours. Anything with treasure, museum, vault, high security bank, nothing can stop you now, as long as you give in to greed. Farron, you're in the middle of the forest, the druids have begin, begun to look for you and you see the rotting corpse of the woman that you love in your hands, and you feel that pain overcome you. As all of a sudden, the shape of a woman wearing a crown with great bat wings appears before you. She tells you to embrace the lust that you feel in this moment, and you will have everything that you need. You look up at her, and you look down at what had been your lover in your hands, and all you see is moss and fungi and decay. Give in to lust, and everything that has gone missing, everything that you've lost will be restored. And you do. You give in to your lust. And all of a sudden, out of the moss begins to form the woman that you love. As Gwenna is brought back to you in this moment, everything that you wanted, everything that you had lost can be yours if you give in to lust. Jericho, you're about to be consumed by a flock of a murder of crows as they begin to devour you. But through the black feathers, you see a shock of white as a large crane with a bloody bill confronts you. And, and it attempts to convince you to give in to envy. If you give in to the envy within you, all that you covet can be yours. All the desire that you have for friendship, companionship, you'll never want for anything. And it feels so close and so within reach, you can't help but get it, give in to it. 
And as you raise your arm, all arms, all of the crows, um, including Virgil, are flayed alive around you. And you realize that with this power of envy, anyone who does not want to be your friend, anyone that challenges you or vies for someone else's attention could be completely destroyed and you would have no competition. There would be nothing left to envy because all that would be left would be you and what you want if all you do is give in to envy. Lethica, you stare out at the mindless, faithless slaves that surround you. They begin they look like they're about to begin to tear you apart. And then you see a beautiful man, half elven, surrounded by albino serpents, as he steps out of the entourage and encourages you, encourages you to embrace your pride and reject your goddess. All, she, all that she wants and all that she has could be yours. You just have to embrace your pride. You raise your arms and the darkness is snuffed out around you. A white, malevolent radiant, radiance consumes the faceless followers of Shar as they all turn in writhing, or as they all turn uh, in writhing pleasure and begin the worship of Lethica. With that kind of power, the power of a goddess, the more worshippers you amass, the more power you will have. You could undo time <coughs> itself. You could have everything that you want, and you think back into your mind's eye and there's something there, the smell of smoke. Even that, whatever is there, even that could be undone if you just give in to pride. Jorgrim, you're being buried in the earth. Through the cracks in the earth, a shape of formless green ooze and black tar emerges and begins to tell you to embrace your sloth. Accept all it has to offer. Relax and give in. Don't fight it. Don't let your muscles tense, just exist and be. And you want to, you want to be able to just give in and not fight and wander, to just sleep. So you do, and you are surrounded by acidic ooze and the chains that bind you, the stone that crushes you, and all the stones of your past that weigh down on you begin to dissolve in the acid of this ooze. And you know that that weight on your shoulders could be completely undone, that you could destroy the weight of anything if you just gave in to sloth. And then you begin to blink and you all come come to the sound of that bell ringing over and over and over again, oppressing you. And now that you're close to it, you, you can hear it now. It is the ringing of this bell that is making people so crazy. There's something in the ringing of this bell that brought on these visions that you just experienced here with your friends. And it is so hard to overcome. And you feel it just pressing on the insides of your mind that if you give in, you could be consumed by those sins yet again. But you counter, you counter it for a minute. You steel yourself against it as you blink and you look around. You see that all of your friends are slowly coming to the vision lingering in your mind. Give in to wrath, give in to lust, give in to pride. As you look out over this room and what you see here disturbs you enough that you're able to forget your visions for a moment. This is clearly a chamber of some sort, but there is no actual bed. It's just a dirty, sick pile of hay. The smell, the smell assaults your nostrils. As you can see, there is no lavatory up here, but a pile of refuse in the floor, on the floor. This is not a room. This isn't a chamber for someone you care about. This is a prison, unlike anything that you've seen. And littered throughout it are toys, broken and unwanted, but small trinkets that clearly Hugo uses to entertain himself. And you see that Hugo is standing not too far from you, looking in shock and anger as he constantly pulls on the bell, but you can see that he is convulsing and crying, blood clearly um, 
uh, Francois's blood covering his body as he cries and rings the bell. And as he sees all of you um, climb over the wall, he lets out a loud roar and drops the rope as he moves towards you. And he doesn't seem to know what to do. He seems confused between his sadness and there's clearly an internal conflict in him where he, part of him wants to rush towards you and toss you from the bell tower, but he also looks at you with kindness and understanding. You're his friends, but you're supposed to be his enemies. And he looks like a an animal trapped in a cage. What do you do? I'll say you have but a few moments given these horrible nightmares that you just had, waking nightmares that you just had, and the way he's reacting, you have but a few moments to to either calm him down or to full out battle with him. Is but he... I would hold up my, sorry. He, he looks like- Is he rushing he, towards us? He's not rushing towards you, but he looks like he's having an internal conflict. And if something doesn't happen, when it's fight or flight, he's probably going to choose flight unless something is done to stop that. I would hold up my hand. Hugo, you remember us, don't you? And I'd take out a, um, some of the jerky that I had for my rations and just kind of like lay it out. Do you want something to eat? You're hungry, aren't you? Roll a uh, roll a persuasion check, um, and I will say at advantage because of the situation in the the dining hall when you gave him food. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> That's what did you ask me to roll? Persuasion. 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 Remember you have twists? <coughs> yeah. Let's, let's twist this. Let's twist this. Oh, thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for the follow, Bogart and oh. Green Toker. Oh. Thank, thank you for the you. follow, everyone. Thank you for the two windows. Oh. 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 And welcome oh. to the chat. Oh. Oh. Yeah, hello. Welcome uh, back. Hugo, Hugo looks towards you, and he looks back towards the bell and back towards you, and he's he's shaking, and tears are streaming down his face. Hugo bad. Hugo hungry. Mm. You, you go may hurt, but this is this is only temporary. You 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 can you can move past this. We will help you. We are here to as your allies. I'll slowly as Lethica's talking. I'll slowly start to approach and and offer him the the food. Uh, I will say roll persuasion uh, at advantage as well because oh. you are being helped. As they're approaching, I would uh, I'd be absolutely like completely just almost shocked by that vision. And I look up and Virgil's still there. And I'm disappointed. <laughs> and I look up and I see Marius, who just had just the opportunity of a lifetime. And he rejected it, like someone who's just been, had it given to them their entire lives, never had to work for anything. Who's never experienced true loneliness. And I covet that deeply. And I think about for a moment, just a brief moment, Mary is being flayed alive. He does not. He is not flayed alive. <sighs> and suddenly, holy shit! I'm immediately ripped back, and I cover my face, and I see Hugo, and I'm processing what's happening as I see him slow down, and I raise my hand. Oh, oh, Hugo! I, 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 I know that you were mighty, mighty sad earlier. And I would just, I meant to give you this and I never got the chance. And I'll reach into my pack and I'll pull out the toy replica of the Ghost Light Express with the little frog conductor that, that uh, hums with that green light. And I'll hold up. Now, part of me, deep within my soul or lack thereof, really, really wants this and doesn't want to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's very cool. And I, I think that you might like it. See, it goes chugga chugga choo choo. And I think maybe a frog voice will say, Welcome all aboard the Ghost Light Express. All aboard the Ghost Light Express. <laughs> How about that? And so alongside with Fair, I and, and also roll a perception check at advantage. Persuasion. And you'll, or sorry, persuasion, persuasion at advantage. And you see that as you hold this out and the, the frog conductor uh, calls out all aboard the Ghost Light Express, you see Hugo's eyes, uh, a smile twitch on his face for a second and pure childlike wonder and joy. And then he looks back towards his room and the, the clearly broken toys, toys that were more than likely broken and damaged when they were given to him, that he is clearly cherished. They're in places of honor on shelves and they're they're dusted and well taken care of, even though they're they're the the unwanted toy. 
the unwanted toys, the toys children have thrown out, but to Hugo, they're everything. And looking at this pristine choo-choo train as you hold it out to him, his eyes are alight in wonder as he, as he looks to it. He can't even believe it's being offered to him. What did you get? 29. 21. And uh, yeah, I would, I would uh, still be talking as, as he's offering this toy, as we're offering the food. I, I, uh, we shared your pain, Hugo. This, this storm will pass as surely as night will fall. Hugo didn't want to do it. Hugo was forced to do it. We know. We know. It's okay. It's all right. Come. Come, please. And he, he looks like he's almost there. He looks like he's he's on the brink of just completely letting go and and giving in to you. These these friends, probably the only true friends that he's ever known, the only true kindness he's ever been shown. We understand. We can just talk, and we'll figure this out together. Hugo bad. Doing Hugo bad. bad Hugo. Doing bad does not make one bad. You are not bad inside. You feel sadness right now, yes? Hugo, very sad. That means there is good in you. All no, of us are a little... Hugo, f- born bad, wicked mom, bad Hugo. That is not true. I would like you to roll another persuasion at advantage. Does he still look threatening? Uh, he's He looks like he's he's still clearly clenching, like he's one wrong move and he might topple the other way, but he is leaning more and more towards Lethica and Farron and Jericho, and he looks like he's um, he's very close to giving in and just And as I step forward with the train up. to offer to him a look at Lethica, and I'll say, Lethica, you have a way with words better than me, and you know how to tug on the strings of one's very soul, and I'll give you Bardic Inspiration, which is the D8. I will hold on to that. We will lead you through this darkness, you Amazing. Um, wow, okay. All of your dice roll Yeah, the, exactly these, the these four are straight fire. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just send it. Let's just, Might as well. Let's just get it on. Ah, yeah. All right. It's almost uh, a seven. Uh, like 15 plus five plus one is 21. <laughs> That's more than enough. He he looks down at you and you see as his muscles relax and he he drops and he just begins to sob and cry and cry. And for a good couple of minutes, he can't get a single word out as he's choking on his tears. I and, try to um, race and embrace him. And, and, he, least... and he lets you and you see that tied around his leg is what appears to be an old dirty shirt where this is clearly the spot that he had been stabbed in or that he'd been stabbed by Francois, um, and he's tried to mend it himself with a dusty or a dirty rag, um, and he uh, he just falls forward. Hugo, ugly. Hugo, stupid. He'll go to Hugo go to Mirabelle house and stabbed. Hugo, angry. Kill, kill man in rage. Hugo, bad. I'll reach down and I will put my hand what I assume is his wound, and I will say, just let it all out. Think these terrible thoughts of yourself. They are not true. Hugo told all life, Hugo stupid. Hugo not worth a damn. Hugo get bad toys, no food, bad Hugo. Hugo, do you think that I am bad? That I Hugo am weak when Hugo feels sad. It's untrue. You are, and I will cast cure wounds. <gasps> oh, Hugo, feel better. You are very special. You should not think these evil thoughts about Hugo, for Hugo is my friend, and I would not hear such Hugo bad words. Hugo can't about him. love new friends. All Hugo loves is taken from Hugo. This is a place of madness, and I know you've experienced great pain. But Hugo must do as Hugo's told. Why do you feel that way? Have you ever tried to leave this place? Hugo has nowhere to go. No one love or trust Hugo. Hugo would die. He heals eight points. Well, 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 Hugo, this doesn't have to turn into a fight. We're friends. We just need to... 
We're just here for, for, for Miss Mirabelle, Mrs. Mirabelle. We'll just take her out of your hands, we'll get her to safety, and we can forget about this whole thing. I understand what it's like to be punished and hated by the circumstances of one's creation. And the sins that you that, that we don't commit just by simply existing were hated. I understand. And as you say that, uh, he looks at you with a bit of uh, questioning and uncertainty. Hugo does not have suffering. That gross pigeon lady everyone thinks is beautiful has suffering. And that is where we'll end the session. Let me in there. Just, I just need ten minutes to, to fuck her up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gods! The gross pigeon lady. Yeah, and I would say from that you'd be able to tell he sees things that other people don't. So he sees her as she is when everyone else. Sees That's her. why she wanted us to fucking kill him. Uh, Dang it! I was wrong. Louder. We should have killed him. I, mean, I had a stat our, block our, our for him too. If you wanted to kill him, terrible decisions. So we probably should have <laughs> fucked up. Well, thank you for the raid. Oh, oh thank, thank you for the raid. Oh my gosh! Bit of an thank intense you. RP moment that you raided, but thank you so much. Uh, we play a lot of D and D here. Quick summary: yeah, we we're, we're in a dread domain um, from the uh, of of Nikki's own creation. Sort of a gothic horror, spooky campaign. Uh, we're in kind of a very holy city. Uh, I picture it like, uh, was it 18th century Paris? Yeah. Notre yeah. Dame style. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, very um, high fantasy version of that. Yeah, so um, anyway, we're not done though. So if you like what you saw, we are going to cut over to Avengers and Chill, which is where we uh, discuss the session. And we talk about our favorite moments. We answer all the questions and comments in chat. So feel free to stick around, hang out with us, uh, throw some comments in. We'll get to all of them, ask us questions, uh, and just sort of chat with us. So um, welcome. So uh, announcements before we cut over to Avengers and Chill. We're back Saturday. Yes. It's Saturday for Beneath Our Wings for all day D&D, &D, 2 p.m. Eastern to midnight Eastern. Ish. All day. That's the big one. Yes, that's our monthly Saturday session. Uh, DM by Mikey here, um, with almost the, all of the rest of us as players. Oh. And where are we there? Yeah. What's going on? Is it uh, we're in also in another dread domain of Harakir, the uh, the domain of the ancient dead. Uh, basically, high fantasy ancient Egypt. Uh, it's really spooky and amazing. They're about to fight a horrible non god, a horrible false god. false god. It's, it's crazy how these yeah. dread domains just popping up like Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's you get a dread domain. You get a dread domain. You get a dread domain. Colliding a little bit. Yeah, so thank you for the follow, Epitaph. Thank you, thank Epitaph. You for the follow. Oh. So why don't we cut over to Mansion and Chill? Yeah, so it's Beneath Dark Wings is the, is the campaign uh, it's Saturday. on Saturday. Yep, BDW. So it's monthly. It'll be episode 29? Something. Oh, yeah. 29. We, we play vastly different characters. Yes. yes. Very, very different characters. Very different theme. Uh, it's a lot of fun. But it's still a lot of fun. So come hang out on Saturday. And then we're back with this campaign on Tuesday. It's our mm -hmm. weekly campaign uh, every Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to cut over to Advantage of the Chill, and we're not going anywhere, so don't go anywhere. We will start in a second.